Booyah. Okay. Did are we are we going? Okay. Yeah, we're going. We're going to the well, F. Going. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're on. on to the F, cool. to the A, to the G. No, no, to the G. No. To the G. To the K to the G. To the K E C H I K. Alright. That is the uh, Fergalicious remix I'm working on. It's also the From the F to the A to the G G O T G O T G O T You can't do it. You can't do it. Okay, yeah. Was this the funny bit you were talking about? No, there's another funny bit that's coming up, ladies and gentlemen. So, yeah, that's how we're going to start this off. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> that's a good welcome, I feel. Yeah, welcome, that's welcome nice to the Sauce of Boys yeah, podcast. Yeah, I really yeah. enjoy that. <laughs> uh, new friend of pod here today, Mitch yeah. Perry. Thanks G'day. for having me. That's all good, man. You're coming. Uh, no, the nice. thanks is ours. You sound good. Talk more. Talk more. I don't know if is that's what you really want on your podcast. Sounding good. <laughs> You've got a very good radio voice. I've been told that before. Actually, a very because it's like very yeah. deep, very like powerful, and kind of booms. I think you're just trying to tell me that I'm ugly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you've got a... Uh, let's just say he has a penis for radio. <laughs> <laughs> to the floor. I like floor. that one. <laughs> uh, it's very small and it should never be on camera, but he's got a very nice voice. Yeah, you know how your dad always said, uh, you've got a good uh, head for radio. Yeah. Well, he also said, uh, you have a good penis for radio. <laughs> and you've got a very good mouth for radio. Because yeah. he's not, my son isn't good at giving me fellatio. <laughs> You've got a very good mouth for radio. Yeah, well, that's uh, better than yeah. your mother's though. She's got a real mouth for radio. Let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> is a is a narrow mouth good for radio or a wide uh, mouth? I think a wide mouth, because yeah. I think you'd want it to be more narrow. What's this? Like a good mouth. Oh, for a uh, for a uh, fellatio. Did you see that? Right. There was a video yesterday or the day before and it was a, a chick and she had like the biggest mouth in the world. Yes, I have seen that. And she could fit like an entire sandwich in her mouth without even like scrunching it up or anything. It was I saw that. that. Made me very insecure. Imagine her like... like close them lips. It's right fucking now. nuts. It's cr- it didn't look kind of like overly huge. I was like, oh, she's just got a very big mouth. She looked like right. one of those fish that came from the deep parts of the ocean. That's <laughs> Imagine you're just in a bar and you see her like in the corner. She's like denying the Holocaust, and <laughs> and everyone's kind of like seeing Everyone this big hear. mouth. <laughs> yeah, and they're all like, "Wow, she's got such she's a big <laughs> mouth!" And they keep kind of giving her bigger and bigger platforms. She begins on radio. She's just on Ellen, and it's like, "Yeah, no, I'm a Holocaust denier, but I've also got the biggest mouth in the world." What kind of so, evolutionary trait is that as well that's been handed down? Um, probably her husband is African. <laughs> <laughs> she was pretty white. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just say my husband is from Haiti, and that's and my grandfather was from Haiti. Um, Would you say she was pretty? I think she was like Russian or Ukrainian or something. Was she Ukrainian? I could be completely making that up. That might have been another story that I saw, and I've combined the two in my head. Sounds like something the Russians would be up to. Yeah, just having a chick with a, a really big mouth. Russians might have big cocks. That could be a thing. I, know, I don't think there are many Russians... I don't know if there's a stereotype that goes around for Russian penises. They're pretty big men in general. That's true. Mm. And they, you get like the fighters and everything like that. But I don't know if it's been a stereotype. Do you know what a stereotype is? Like uh, Hispanic, like Mexican dudes. Yeah. That's a real... Like what, them having... Dicks? Yeah, big dogs. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I guess well, I'm not Hispanic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I guess I've never been to Mexico. But there was something... I remember reading something about the <laughs> Irish ones. And they, if you go back in history, they used to say they had big dicks. And Ooh. then at a certain point, the stereotype changed. They had small dicks. Yeah, because I've I, I always known the Irish thing is having a small penis. But there now. was something about once upon a time, they would say they had big dicks once back. Ari, we used to be liars. <laughs> we used to we, be li- <laughs> to to We used to be liars. We used to lie back in the day. A leprechaun... Uh, because it's like a whole leprechaun theory that Irish people are all leprechauns. A leprechaun's a good thing or a bad thing in Ireland? I they think like it's bad. It? Oh yeah, is it good luck or is it bad luck? Well, maybe that's the thing. Maybe it's nothing. yeah. Maybe it's like a um, like a facade or whatever. Like the leprechaun comes and gives you money, but then you get a tiny little dick at the end of it. Oh, that's mm. true. Uh, like a trap or whatever. <sighs> like the fair. Uh, I'm trying to think of like a, a f- like a mythical reference yeah, to give Rumpel it. Like, or yeah, Rumpel Stiltskin. Yeah, something, something like, like that. that yeah. yeah. What would you do? Would you rather kind of like let's say you a leprechaun comes? Oh, this is good. You see yeah. a leprechaun. And it's like, I'm going to give you all the money you want. 
but your penis is going to be to have, one. <laughs> but I get to have sex with your wife. <laughs> I give you all the money you want, but I get to have sex with your wife. And you're like, okay, five hundred dollars. <laughs> That's how we do it up in Ireland. You know what's any money you want, right? Uh, Six hundred. <laughs> it's just me, we Irish cock. Oh, Seamus, you wouldn't believe the little fella. He gives a good plow, and I think the <laughs> the stereotypes about the Irish are completely wrong. <laughs> He had a good old pecker on him. <laughs> it was about twice the size of the poor fella. Uh, that's that's tricky. One inch penis. Yeah, one inch penis, but you get all the money you want. All the money. Yeah, one you... inch penis is fine. My girlfriend can still peg me. That's fine. Oh, that's tr- yeah, you probably just <laughs> get into true. pegging. That's yeah. what would happen. You oh, get you all might, the money. But, but you also have to date the chick with the massive mouth and she can't give you... <laughs> <laughs> oh, she can only oh, give you blowjobs. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's a way. Have you ever even dated a chick one. with a big hand? It's embarrassing. Goodness <laughs> gracious. Imagine being like gay and having yeah. sex with LeBron James. You just see yeah. his huge basketball hands against your tiny penis. Well, I've got a, st- <laughs> you know I I got mean. a story for you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah, dog. When I was in, I, uh, when I was in Miami. LeBron James. <laughs> when I was in Miami, I uh, went to Jamestown, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Let's just say he's never met a leprechaun in his life. <laughs> What happened with this LeBron James story? I don't know. Oh, you don't know? I, I thought I you actually had fucked it. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we did have sex with LeBron James. I well, think... one of my mates did go to America and they, they were on some big bucks and they hired a house. Yeah. And he went to put the bin out in the morning mm. and LeBron was putting his bin out next door. Are you door. kidding? It was the LA house next to LeBron's. Are you and LeBron, he, he and puts out his own he, bin. Yeah, he, he put his own bin out. That's disgusting. Can you text your friend, find out the address right now so we can no, tell our listeners? He's a guy from the Berg. He's not even a close friend. He just told me the story. I think our listeners want to know LeBron's home address. I think we want to know his home address. But I can't this, believe he's taking his home This was when he was still playing in Cleveland like eight years ago too. Oh. So it was like his summer house that he would go out to. So he might not even live at the still the same place anyway. I can't though. believe he takes his own bin out. Do you know how demeaning that is? Man, man of the people. That's true. It probably keeps you humble. Like they apparently reckon, The Rock watches his own He's dishes. never cheated. All right, he's uh, never... Sorry, he's never cheated on his wife. LeBron James. They reckon he's never cheated on his wife. Really? So you see, there was what something... What a loser. There yeah. was some I rumor, thought he used to be cool. Um, taking his bin out. Having sex with a guest. Yeah, he does <laughs> kind of sound lame, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. He sounds like a like a high school basketball teacher, not like the best basketball I know, player ever. of all time. Mm. And like Wilt Chamberlain or... Was it Wilt Chamberlain or uh, one of those other ones back in the day? They reckon he fucked like 4,000 women or something. Like he fucked every chick on one campus and like... He was just a cool. man. What, yeah, about, yeah. what about Kilt Chamberlain? He's like, Hey, lassie, <laughs> I'll have sex with all of yous. I'll have sex with all of yous. Especially that LeBron James character. <laughs> I'll show him a thing or two. I'll make him cheat on his wife. Uh, Will Chamberlain. I don't know what Will Chamberlain oh, looks no, like. I don't know. He was a huge, huge. He's got like a hundred points in a game once. Gosh. So, there, there was also a story. I think it was on like Black Sports Online or something recently. Mm. And uh, supposedly the story is that Steph Curry and mm. his wife have an open relationship. Yes, fully, I've heard that. I've but heard they, that. They That's... still want to get sponsorship deals and shit, so they don't want it to come out to the world. What about Steph Curry? He was like, Buddy, me and my wife have an open relationship. No. Why is he Indian? <laughs> Curry. Buddy. <laughs> Buddy, my name's Steph. Me and my wife, we have sex with everyone. If Buddy. I could do a Thai accent, we could just fight with curries. <laughs> oh, I could no, be I Steph Curry. <laughs> Jax is giving me a look. He's like, okay. If someone could do a Thai accent. No, no we had curry too. No, we, no, no, we had curry too. <laughs> I can't do the accent. We eat bad curry. I, I've That's good. So- <laughs> I wish I could. You shouldn't do I that. I wish I could so bad. <laughs> no, I don't know why I make curry. I made bad curry for you. I No, no, I make good curry for you. Like, buddy, I, I got the best curry here. I, my name is... Buddy, they named me after it. It's like, no, no, they named me after it. I've been doing it for 100 years. This, so I'll show you why. This is Steph and Seth Curry <laughs> fighting in the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> what if you have, what oh, if you do you have to go. if you had like an open relationship like that do you have to agree on <laughs> say that's his wife right and yeah. his wife's just like oh yeah i want to smash this guy that's in this other team he's been buying me drinks all night oh Goodness dude gracious. surely he'd be having like some rule you're not fucking around the league sure you got to talk about it right yeah you there's comedians I mean? that have talked about that before on i've heard it somewhere on a podcast but 
They, one of them was in an open relationship and one of the rules was she wasn't allowed to fuck comics. Was oh, one of well, that's, oh, interesting. That makes game. sense because yeah. you don't want to feel like there's competition. I just want this to be some random guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you exactly. know what I, mean? I don't want to be some guy I work with or like some yeah. girl like that. Or what someone like in the same field. Have you brought your girlfriend to comedy? <laughs> no, fuck no. You never would? Well, oh, I will at some point probably, yeah. So many right. comedians talk about it like you have a girlfriend or whatever. You love this person. One of the things you think they love about you is that you're funny. Yes. And then you go there. And she hears me do my Steph Curry impersonation. <laughs> and she's, like, <laughs> she's like, I didn't know you felt this way about me. But even think about it with anything, musicians, whatever. Like say you're Kendrick and your yeah. wife is there. And then if you found out she was going to a Drake concert, you would be like... Dang. Yeah. You can't oh, wreck you. Unless you went together. Because yeah. I know a lot of people go to like concerts together. And it'll be, especially like if they're, even comics, they'll be like, oh, I'm going to go see this comic. Let's go see him. He's hilarious. Like, I'm sure a lot of comics yeah. would go see Louis C.K. I've been like to co- plenty of comedy shows with my girlfriend, just not ones that I've been on. Yeah, so in her head, you could be the best. Well, if it's not something you're actually judging your character. She knows of. I'm shit. <laughs> 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 Has she seen anything? Have you told her like... Uh, she's heard... She heard one... I showed her one of the recordings once of... Oh. Uh, just something that happened. It was ages ago. It was before the lockdown. I can't remember, even remember what it was. Something happened in the middle of the set and I wanted to... I couldn't oh, explain it. you wanted it. to show it to and her. I, I just played it for her. And, and she's like, well, that's... I guess that's how Steph Curry would sound if he was Indian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I don't know if it's funny, but uh, I guess it's got some truth to it. Also, you were having a conversation and she's like... You have to explain it so you have to show yeah, it. She's it like, I don't like, get I it. I, I don't get that joke about the baguette. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I should do. I should just get up there and shit on French people for five minutes. She'd be probably good. heaps into it. <laughs> yeah. I don't probably. forget it. It's very funny. I don't forget it because she's French. And that's what she says instead of I don't get it. I don't forget it. Was that what you were going for? Or is, did I just come up with it, that joke? Everyone's doing fine. Everyone's doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's doing just I don't know if there is actually anyone listening And they wouldn't have even known my girlfriend was French anyway Yeah, so she's French (laughs) Yes Um, Don't worry, we'll edit that We'll put that In the start (laughs) Right before I say it (laughs) And it'll be perfect I've got a feeling like somehow you're not an editing whiz Or are you? Am I underestimating That's a good little jab at him You estimate correctly Okay (laughs) Okay But he's a I don't even know how to do it He's a get editing whiz (laughs) <laughs> because he's, <laughs> he's he's good at giving giving fellatio to men. Oh yeah, yeah there's something. Yeah. So does your girlfriend wear that funny stripy little t shirt that French people no, wear? No, 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 no. She doesn't do that. No, 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 no. What's the most French what? thing she's done? Um, she's definitely blunt in conversation, like some French people. Oh, are sometimes. like she'll just not not. That's kind of cool. There's some things where like maybe Australians would say please sometimes. She still says please. But there's something sometimes Australians say please too much. I think oh, we're overly she, we're overly kind of polite. Yeah, so it's sometimes like, please, thank you. Can I please please have a please like yeah. subway? And there's sometimes like I'll turn and be like, you're be, being rude. Like oh yeah, there's stuff like that. Yeah, sorry, she's French. Yeah, there's little there's little stuff. Yeah, you even have to anyone get who comes from a country yeah. where there's that many people, I think. They're just not as good on the street. Unless they're like Japanese or some shit like that. Because those people are very really polite. Yeah. But like there's something about Europeans. They just drift through in in walkways. Like they there's no one else walking there. You know what I mean? They're like and bumping they into people? They're, they're or, just, or they're like looking around and they're like... just Or they're looking at their phone. Yeah. And they're like... Oh, they just know how to navigate. They like they've got the tails. Yeah. Like, just walk in a straight fucking line. Or stay to the left. Little things like that where I'm probably too like autistic and following the rules too much. And, oh, like, so they're not following the rules. In my own head. It's, it's all on me probably. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, That's yeah. interesting, yeah. I wonder if I wonder if even like the history has something to do with it. You know, like white Australians been here for what, 200, 300 years. You know what I mean? Or and forever. I wonder if we're kind of like still working that out. That's why we're very polite because our... our it's like white guilt. But even our history, you're kind of just placed on this place and you have to get along. You've yeah. got to be friends with the people That's next true. to you. Otherwise, shit falls apart. What about, I was thinking about that whole idea of um, uh, that Hotep Jesus saying black people have always been in America. Mm-hmm. I would really like for kind of a conservative person to say, you yeah, know, white people have always been in Australia. We 
used to live. We've been here forever. <laughs> Yeah. That's just That's how good. it was. We used to live with the indigenous people. Yeah. And then we just progressed. Okay. And they just have like, that's their stance. It's like, no, we never came here from England. We were always here. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And that's just their take. I want someone to come on a podcast and have that take. <laughs> that's pretty crap. Mitch? I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do I just scream that just looking at me? Like, yeah. Start some new take. like okay. the Holocaust is fake 2.0. Yeah, Australia like people version. have always been yeah. in Australia. <laughs> yeah, that's really interesting. I, I've never known that about European people. Walking. Through. Yeah. Mm. I know they're blunt because I, I just assumed it was a language thing, but the cultural aspect to it's interesting. Having so many people. Yeah, that's true. Kind of, that's true. But I, I guess it's like big versus small cities, though. I know like people from Sydney give off a certain aura. Yeah, that's hundred percent. I think it's actually. I think that's what it is too. Like, I come from a little small town. Oh, well. do you? Ah. Where? We're just down the coast, but we only have like Where? Helensburg. We only have. Oh, like, sick, dude. Yeah, we only. Your have neighbors. Like, no. Where did you come from? Oladella. Oh, right. There you go. Further. Ah, Helensburg okay. was just like a little coal mining town. It's kind of got much bigger now. Like when I was a kid, there was only like two and a half or three thousand people live there or Gosh, something. Wow. But now it's like six or seven. It's blown. It's way yeah. bigger. It's essentially the first suburb out of Sydney. Oh, okay. I'm it's the first one it just to get an out idea. of Sydney. Uh, and then moving to Sydney was kind of just a natural progression for you. Well, I stayed in the gong for... I was in and around like the Rule and Ostie and that down oh, there yeah. while I was just... Yeah. I'm, I tw- I'm about to turn 28, so I've been living down there up until six, seven months ago when I moved I was up. in Wollongong for a few years. Yeah. The gong's good. Yeah. It's good. It's got... It's, it's, there's definitely shit parts about it too. Well, it's, it's Sydney Junior. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You go from the small town to Wollongong and it's like there's shops open all night, there's pubs and da-da-da-da-da. Then you come to Sydney and it's just like... Yeah. Oh, wait, it's Sydney. Wait, Wollongong's open all night. No, no, no. Like, or if Sydney you is. come from somewhere smaller around oh, Wollongong, yeah. when you go to Wollongong, you're like, whoa. Ah, but really, it's fucking shit. Like, you get that with apprentices a lot when you're working down there. Some 18-year-old would come and be like, I finally went out in Wollongong. How fucking sick is it? And you'd be like, get on the train, cunt. It's only fucking another hour. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah, go, yeah. just go out somewhere yeah. good. You, you know, you're, gonna, you're thankful for it. It is funny yeah. people that kind of never travel. I always find oh, that interesting. Heaps of, like, little, yeah towny people in Wollongong and like nothing against it but they go out in those nightclubs every weekend and like yeah. I've got nothing mm. against Wollongong but those nightclubs are fucking shit they what's are, wrong with them? Oh, well it's a bunch of young awful. uni people as well going out for the first time okay. 18, 19 being like oh this is crazy so there's like a real turnt kind of culture to it yeah but the, that's Wednesday, Thursday right? in the gong Wednesday, right. Thursday is more uni but on the weekends, a lot of the uni kids will work, right? Oh, They're no. a lot of them are hospo. So you also get all your like Westies and shit that are like, oh, we're going into town. Right. Oh, true, because you know? it's yeah. so far west, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. There's Go got all, the it's the same as Sydney in a way. It's not the same, but it's got all western suburbs where there's all the sketchiest place I've ever been to. I've done jobs all over the place. Brisbane, Melbourne, Sydney, all the shit of suburbs. There's a <laughs> suburb in Wollongong called Mangerton. And there's this little like <laughs> fucking house block where it's just like street on street on street of them. They're all together. Mangerton yeah. in Wollongong. Yeah, just yeah. behind the station. And we were, I was walking up to deliver a, a mattress when I was delivering furniture for a bit. And everyone had their pens out and notepads. <laughs> Dude. It's the sketchiest. Get it? It's the sketchiest. Yeah. 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 Didn't, didn't, everyone's that, setting up that. cameras you and putting that. on like five minute comedy videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they call the SNL suburb. Yeah. <laughs> everyone's everyone's just wearing sketches, like running. They'd be like, look how comfortable we are, we're running. It's the like, really <laughs> ones as well. <laughs> Dude, this area is sketchy. And they're just literally wearing sketches, doing like a right drawing on a notepad and someone has a camera all three kinds of sketches yeah, like, can we think is, of another one uh, can we think of another type type of sketch sketch and also they are raping women and there are <laughs> sketches of them done afterwards like what did he look like I don't even I don't even know. So, yeah, what, what you, you were working in this town. Oh, shit. Why well, was yeah. it sketchy? The, uh, there was 18 apartments mm. and only eight of them still had front doors. The rest of them just had curtains hanging because, like, someone had just fucking kicked the door in there and never replaced shit. it. <laughs> and, like, people living in there. People living in there, bro. Just junkies, man. Goodness. Just oh, fucking It felt like I was in, like, the worst part of Detroit. And because it was in that part of autumn, like, where all the leaves were off the trees and they yeah. were on the floor and it looked all, like, 
Yeah, it was sketchy, Goodness man. Goodness gracious. The cur- I kind of think it's a pretty bold move to be like, yeah, we're going to have a door, we have a curtain. Come in if you want to. We got nothing to. There's yeah, nothing to steal. Yeah, I know. That's I kind of. What you yeah. say. Oh shit! There's I like that. That's idea. hectic. I think what Japanese should like adopt something because they have this big idea that no one's going to steal. They should just have like curtain doors. Don't they have mm. that? Their houses just fold down because earthquakes or some shit. Oh. Or do I just sound like an ignorant white person right now? I think. It well, I have right. no idea, so I'm in the same boat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're gonna say both. Yeah. I think it sounds all right. Houses folding down. There was something about that because they have. I'm pretty sure they're like writing a fault line or something. They have like, what in J- oh, Japan with yeah yeah with earthquakes. The, oh oh no because Godzilla probably is gonna come. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing they have to like quickly pack up their house. He like pops out of a volcano. <laughs> Do you think Godzilla you know, ever came to to Japan? And um, uh, I don't know where that's gonna go. I have no idea where that's gonna go, but it's gonna go somewhere. I think it's gone into like heaps and heaps and heaps of shit blockbuster movies. <laughs> what is? <laughs> oh, Godzilla, Godzilla has, movies. Didn't they do Godzilla vs. King Kong or something recently? Oh, that's true. Yeah. They started coming over the top with that series, yeah. I think. Where would King Kong... Godzilla was always pretty over the top. Because it's the idea is like, it's a big dinosaur, isn't it? Just the idea of it's a bit over the top. I know, a big dinosaur? It wasn't a big dinosaur. And it's it comes like a to lizard Japan. even. It's not even necessarily a dinosaur. It's just a giant lizard. Oh, great. Oh. Imagine just the average person. They're just like going to work or something. And it's just like, oh, great. Godzilla's here. <laughs> they got a flat. They had to call like a mechanic to come change it. And then they look up and they're just like, oh, great. There's a giant lizard destroying Tokyo. It's like, yeah, Jeffrey, sorry. I'm going to have to take the kids. Like, you're just not making enough money to support the family. I've actually started talking to someone else online. I know there are dangers to it, <laughs> but I am just going to have to take my chances because we're actually in danger. We can't actually survive living with you. So hopefully you can figure out what you're going to do, but we are going to leave. No, please. And then he go, you know. Please, I, I, I've, I, I, I'm going to go to work today. You know, right, I'm going to get that big promotion. You've been saying this for too long. Like, you literally have three kids you cannot support. I'm talking on someone who's actually sending me money right now. One more chance. Just give me have one a more chance. Life. I can't lose you and the kids. It's not all about you. And that's the thing, you're spending too much of this free time doing things for yourself. You actually have a family now. You actually need to actually think about someone other than yourself. You've got three other people in your life that you have to support. Believe and me. be there for. I can change. Give me one more you day. I won't hear another word. You haven't been to anything Isaac's done. He's literally been in kindergarten for a year now. <laughs> and you haven't come to one of his things. Give me one more day. Beep. Oh, it's a giant fucking lizard. <laughs> I thought the kid, are, are we in Japan? What kid in Japan's called fucking Isaac? <laughs> oh, they're a white okay. family living yeah, in are a white family living in. It's like, oh, great. Now we've got Godzilla out the front. Have you ever been like, <laughs> ever been going to work and you go to get on the train and you find out someone jumped in front of it and you're just like, selfish bastard. Like, that's what you'd feel about Godzilla. Because like, you're like, I wish it was me. Selfish fucking prick. I wish it was me because his job's not going anywhere. Yeah. I wish I was Godzilla. Okay, great. I hope he kills me. I actually hope Godzilla kills me and my wife. My whole wife who's been talking to some man online. Yeah, I hope the, hope the kids have that outside. Yeah. Godzilla walks over to the guy and he's like... That's right, they were white. <laughs> the Godzilla guy walks over and goes... Um, family I'm talking about? He's like, oh, Jeremy? And you're like, yeah. what is it, Godzilla? He's yeah. like, did your wife call you? I've kind of been talking to her online a little bit and... And uh, Paul, Paul, he's here already. Well, yeah, Jerry, you meet Paul. This is my new husband. Are you guys like scared of Japanese names or some shit? What's I, going I, on? I, I think it's, it's not even a fear. Uh, I don't know any. You'll do the voice, but I you won't bring the name up. Ignorant. <laughs> I do the voice at a big. Okay, Azuku. But uh, yeah, uh, in, 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 in summary, <laughs> Ooh, Azuku, I'm it's... here. Poor. Do you uh, do you happen to be called poor? No. Poor. Stop. <laughs> Have you ever watched Japanese gangster movies? No. Underrated. Oh, really? Underrated. I got ooh, caught this ooh, two or three separate yeah. times on SBS. It was when I, was, I flicked past the international channel. Mm. And I just watched it for a second because they're going, Yakuza. And I was like, oh, oh let's, yeah, let's yeah. watch for a second. I got fully dragged in. Are you kidding? Yeah, they're actually... They look so cool. The Japanese... I've never Japanese, even heard of a Japanese gangster like movie. Japanese gangster movies and some of them are really cool. Yeah. God, you got it's a lot of reading. Ah, okay. It's a lot of reading if you mm. do. You've got to do the subtitles, yeah. Thing, obviously, yeah. but it's the worth it. I've watched a couple of them. Some of them, and I'm not even like some art douche or nothing. I don't even like movies that much. Just like gangster movies like that always sucking me in. Gangster Japanese movies. I've never heard of that. Pretty. That good. sounds sick. 
They are going to take all of our sushi. We have to do something about it. <laughs> we have to get some whale. How <laughs> does it? Does it? Does the? Is it a mafia? It's a yakuza. Yakuza, yakuza is um, just uh, essentially a mafia. Yeah. It's yeah. A, oh, that's right. Yeah, I yakuza. Think so, anyway. I don't. Yeah. I think it's yeah it, their version of the mafia. It seems like the same thing from the movies I've seen. It's like right. a lot of killing people and putting them in trunks of cars and drowning them and shit. It's the same crap. But they have yeah. they're cooler because they got the tattoos. They ride motorbikes. They have yeah, cool haircuts. Like they got very cool haircuts. It's they're a movie, like, so they'll all be like really attractive. Oh there's always one that's got like beautiful. symmetrical. Yeah. One's got like beach blonde hair, and there's always the really old like Japanese guy who's like the mob boss or whatever. Dang. He's like he's like completely he's cold, tattooed. man. No, you don't. He's in. Full suit, you know what I'm saying? And he's just like, cold. his eyes are like dead and he's just like staring. They're good, they're good. Goodness. Oh shit. Oh, that does sound, out. yeah, I know that, that sounds That does sound sick. very, yeah. that literally, I might have to look this up when I get home. Shit. I don't remember what it was called. Two of them had the same actors and shit. There must have been like number one and number two or oh, something like a sequel. that I saw. Like Shrek 1, Shrek 2. I had a feeling yeah. like it was, exactly like I had a feeling it was, Godzilla I had a feeling it was one actor for ev- everyone. It was kind of like an Eddie Murphy thing. I think there was what like was this, that movie? Uh, it was just the one guy uh, Meet Norbert or something was Yeah it was it Nor- played everyone? Norbert I think Norbert or? Had everyone That's how I think of When I um, watch any Asian um, film or... well, I haven't That's seen the I didn't see true, the Parasite man, one I heard oh, yeah, the Parasite, Parasite one was good Oh dude that was so good I haven't watched it yeah. yet but I think that's Korean Yeah it is Yeah, yeah. Oh, It's the same thing But um Yeah because it looked like The guys from the Yakuza movie Who's across like That's the, the water from Japan? You got like the Philippines just looking out at Japan and they just oh, see I this have, massive oh, lizard oh, walking over. I have no idea. I've, I'm so bad with the geography of there. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I realized? I thought Korea was right next to there, but that's I have no fucking idea. I, I realize Antarctica is right next to us. It's pretty close. I had no idea. What? I think there's a country yeah. in... Um, what? This is me just being so ignorant. I had no way. I assumed Antarctica was really far north, like near Russia. And then I realized the world was round. <laughs> I'm not even joking. It was one of those things I've just never really thought about. I'm looking at like Google Maps all the time. I had no idea Antarctica was just right below Australia. You know what's really interesting? Like China, Chinese calendar, right? Yeah. It's literally different than the way we measure time. Okay. What if there's just... They have to be more precise. There's what more I'm saying millimeters is, to it. Do you think there's China and there's like mathematicians from back in the day, they're doing the equations, they're like, the earth is round. Or do you think maybe everyone in China, because I don't know different. No, no. Maybe yeah. they all think the earth is flat. That would be amazing. You'd be like, oh yeah, no, the world's flat. Of course. Oh yeah, no, we're flat. Don't. Don't. <laughs> Stop. I don't know about you, but we're flat. We've been doing it forever. Yeah, we're flat. <laughs> it gets so uncomfortable. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like the accents. He doesn't like the accents. That's what I'm gonna keep on doing. You'll be like, yeah, I don't know what you're all talking about, but we figured out a million years ago. Well, the world flat. Yeah. And that just might be it. <laughs> <laughs> Last week. No, 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 no. <laughs> what happened Ra week? No, Ra stop, week. dude. It's not even good. It's not funny. I just want to know what happened Ra week. <laughs> the funniest thing's your reaction. That's the funniest thing. You're just so fed up with him. <laughs> his Jackson has his head on his head and he's drinking. Am I making him drink? There we go. He's drinking. Anyway, if the... What were we Russ talking about week. again? Ch- what about what was it about China? Let's just uh, talk about here. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should talk about China. I don't know why. All right. But, and what would they sound like? I, I don't know where we go with that. <laughs> we do have a world news segment that's going to be coming oh, is that to end the, uh, <laughs> that's gonna end, the, end the podcast. We do that. Um, but anyway, what are we talking about? Uh, we do have, actually have a bunch of topics as well. That someone. we're very, very keen to get into. Oh, I yeah. think. Yeah. So you went down to the gong for this weekend? Yeah, I went down on the weekend, yep. How Partied. Right? Oh, yeah, parties on the gong. Party. Nice. In the gong. Is what it is, better? Do they. What is Hunch? No, nah, it's not really better. I went. Uh, I just went to a house party down there, but it was just good. It was sick. It was like right up the top of the hill on like one of the mountains. You're kind of looking sick. over all of Wollongong. Yeah. It's a good spot. What about like a house party and everyone's just like wearing a cane and really jaded and bitter? I mean, we're using we're a, a what? Cane. Are using, using a, cane. a cane? 
Yeah, that yeah, they're kind of like sound. popping pills. We can all pretend to be like eighty. Yeah, we're something. all we're all house. Do you ever watch House? The- well, maybe that's the hottest one hundred party. Like, who can be the hottest one hundred year old? Oh, that's a good one. That's actually <laughs> very good. Hottest one hundred party. Yeah. That's a very nice way of looking at it. Everyone just kind of looks like a beautiful, over the top, older person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get kind of like the, the the gray afro and everything like that, and the track suit, and maybe like some. Huge we can give hair. each other uh, prostate exams. Yeah, yeah. I like. Well, it was I going. Like that. Um, but yeah, hottest one hundred was an interesting one. What are your thoughts on... Well, that's really subjective. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you no, it, no, no. I'm just you thought it wasn't around. interesting. I'm just fucking around. Did you listen to the whole thing? Not... Like, I was there. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, I don't... Yeah, I heard... I heard people's reactions and stuff. I don't follow the radio as much, so it's hard for me to, like, react to each one and... Yeah. Yeah, I feel you. I also feel myself getting older and distancing myself from it, too. It's kind of youth radio, right? That's a nice thing. Interesting. Yeah, it's that's, that's cool. See, like, the what are these kids? I don't even know what these kids are talking I don't know, about. Talking anymore. about TikTok songs and shit, and I'm like, I yeah, fuck. I wouldn't even know what a TikTok song is because yeah. I know I'm kind of clinging on for dear life. Oh, Same. me too. You know oh, I mean? me too. Me too. But I've me just too. let go of music. That's just one I've let go you of. Have I'm to, like, you have right. to let go of something. You got to pick some, yeah. pick and choose your battles, man. Yeah. And like all my mates are, oh, not all my mates, but some of my mates having kids and like get married and stuff, and they're going buying houses, different different stage. So me listen to music if that happens. Me just coming in yeah. here to tell dick jokes, but that's that's me hanging on to some sort of stupid youth, you know. That's true, and yeah. I guess like yeah. yeah, comics are kind of quite juvenile. I think just naturally compared yes. to in someone. denial. <laughs> yeah, I know we're in denial. It's like yeah, we all are getting old, but we're acting kind of like. How old are you guys? I don't know how old. You I'm are. 25. I'm okay. under sixer. 26. 26. Yeah. 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 So I'm only just a little bit older than you. Yeah. So yeah. basically, I would say the age is kind of like late twenties. I'm about to turn 27 and I think that's kind of, yeah, late 20s. Yeah, and I'm I think about that's to turn 28, whole, same shit. Yeah. Yeah. A big interesting thing with the hottest 100. So not your penis, interesting thing. <laughs> and like clinging on for dear life kind of thing, right? Like yeah. I got friends that are like, oh, this is so shit. Why is this song in here, right? Yes. And I'm like, well, this is, for example, there's like a whole like meme wave coming through of these really memey jokes yeah like this song is like uh the song he's kind of like rapping it i guess and there's a guy chilling at his house his homemate comes in and he's like oh have you seen my keys oh this is a skit like a no TikTok. this is a song oh this is a song. so he's explaining yeah. the situation he's like have you seen my keys da 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 mm. and then the chorus is like did you check your butthole and then it's like oh. a slap, like boom, boom, boom. And that made You're the Triple J Hottest 100? Yes. Really? Two of his songs. Dang. It's very similar to that. I'm, uh, I can't quite recall the other one. But my friend was talking about it to me. He's mm. like, I don't know. This is too memey. It kind of makes a joke of what would like music. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's like, well, this is, it does something for someone. But yeah, I, I don't think it's good to make a joke of music, but music is kind of like tattoos where they're all kind of just copying each other. There's nothing that new anymore. Yeah. And stuff like that has happened, I guess, forever. But I guess probably more now with this whole... Like, it's still good. I'm not saying it's not good. Like, tattoos are good. Music's good. They're both good. Yeah. But there's not like a whole bunch of like, you know... Meme music is quite original though. Because even I think memes in general are quite... Is it like no. original? Because yeah, I, I was even thinking about that. Like, hasn't Wildo Yankovic been doing that for like twenty years? Yeah, but yeah. not so kind of linked in, in such a memey way. It was funnier, is what you're saying before. Yeah, I think there was a little bit more structure in Weird Al's stuff. It was kind of like, hey, I'm going to talk about a topic here, and I'm going to spoof this song. Whereas yeah. memes can kind of be a little bit more abstract. And I think the what is it like almost like a dartist kind of like we're gonna test the limits of everything. It's their own fault though. Joke and- it's Triple J's own fucking fault because last year it started with that stupid uh, uh, get on the beers that they remixed of that premiere from yeah, down yeah, in yeah. Victoria, and oh. everyone loved that song. And that's the same thing that made the hunt. It's of like some thing it? that caught meme wave online, yeah. and everyone was down for that. And now it snowballed into the next year, and people are like. Oh, it's mm. just hacky and memey. And yeah. that's the thing. When someone that's does something like that, it. someone set a trend and people are going to follow it for five years before it disappears. And again. now meme songs are just yeah. going to be like the next. But is, is, are meme songs just the future of music though? I definitely What think- was Crazy Frog? 
Oh, oh, it wasn't. Yeah. Was that a meme oh, song? That's true. Was that a meme? That was like two thousand and three. Yeah, yeah. That was good point. years ago. How's this? <clears throat> this is reminding me of it. Mm. There's an apprentice at work, and he's telling me about how he's about to turn eighteen. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I see his car, and he's got two thousand and four number plates, and I'm like, holy shit. Dang, that's 2004. Yeah. Yeah. 2018. That's crazy. And you're he like, don't cons- tell anyone we had sex. He could have Don't been, tell anyone. He could have been conceived a crazy frog. That's how old he is. Gosh, 2004. That's a good bit, dude. <laughs> that's a good bit. Do you have that? Like, do you do that as a joke? No, I haven't done that on stage. That's no. funny. You reckon? Yeah. Oh, maybe I'll try it. Yeah. Into something. You know you're getting old when it's like, I remember 2004. Yeah. Like, I remember. I finished primary school in 2005. Yeah. Dang. Dang. Yeah. That's great. And I finished 2007, but like 2004 is such a memorable, like I remember I was a person then. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's creepy to feel like, yeah, this person wasn't even born. We were all just talking about Afghanistan and crazy yeah. frog. <laughs> <laughs> and how like, yeah, the Jewish people were responsible for 9-11. <laughs> like, I, you know what I mean? I was probably like nine. And I remember that was a very, was something I was quite passionate about, yeah. that topic. That sounds like an, your standard nine-year-old. Yeah. You were really a trendsetter, weren't you? I, I was quite a trendsetter. <laughs> Did a you start Reddit? Maybe I you started a, Reddit. I, know, I, I think it would have come around around that time, Reddit. It's got to be about there, yeah. I think. Well, I what did know. you think about the Wiggles winning, though? What, your, what was your take on that? Was, I think it's that? rigged. I'd, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we, right, were, yeah. we were already talking about this. Yeah, you do I, think it's I was rigged. telling the boys before, and I'll say it on here too, but I was like, this: the Hottest 100 is a vessel for them to promote their own segments. It's the same as when the Rubens beat Kendrick and from the start of the day, they kept saying, uh, this band that started in Unearth, could they win it all? This mm. band that started in Unearth, could they win it all? They're just repeating the name Triple J as many of the times as they can. Yeah. And then at the end of it, they talk about what a great thing they are for music. It's the same. And the Like A Version thing is a huge segment. And last year was the first time it really took off speed in the... Hottest 100. Maybe it was the year before that. There was one of those recent years where um, someone did a cover of like a Cher song or something like that. Oh. Uh, DMAs, I think it was. Do DMAs. You Believe? Was yeah. it a Cher song? Yeah. Is that Cher? Yeah. yeah. That that was that one really went up high yes. a couple of years ago. And then again, every mm. single year, they've had more of them in there, right? Because mm. there wasn't that many of them. They didn't really used to get like versions in the mm. Hottest 100. It seems kind of weird to even include them because it's but such it's just an a, obvious it's a vessel. promotional yeah, yeah, thing. Like, and yeah, it's often a, a cover of a song that came out years before yeah. that year. So you're just dragging songs that people already love yeah. from years before. People have already love this song. Yeah. Now you've got a cover of it from a band that they like Dang. as well. And every time you say it, you can also go Triple J, Triple J, Triple J. Hey, how much? Yeah. How much? Kind of like Dang. in terms of the um, like the royalties and stuff like that. Like, I wonder oh. if they. Let's say if someone did a cover of Thriller. You don't get to pick. Oh, you don't get to pick. You get a choice of a few songs. Oh, okay, oh, that's right. interesting. Because yeah. they probably have they've signed something with the with the record labels to be like, hey, I want to include da 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 da. Like smells like Teen Spirit. Well, yeah, even um, Spacey Jane. Yeah. Recently, do you know those guys? I've heard that name before. I don't know them though. They kind of got they... third or something, didn't they? I feel like second I've seen last them year before. they got second. Oh, they're second, right? Um, yeah, but they covered the Beatles. Wow. Here comes the sun by the Beatles, That's which was huge. in the countdown, which is yeah one of the biggest songs ever. Yeah. yeah. And you start well, to think, how is Triple J get kind of getting the rights for the cover? Unless they're just not making any money on that song, but it seems so tricky to do. I don't know about these newer ones, right? I, I'm pretty sure "Do You Believe" is on Spotify, isn't it? The cover, because oh, I know. Do you remember um, Chet Faker did a yeah. cover of uh, that song? Love, uh, yeah, that one. Yeah, and that was huge. You can't find that cover on Spotify. Mm. Oh, for real? Yeah, you can't find that like a version on Spotify. It's not on Spotify. Yeah, the copyright thing would be so too tricky. It's mm. they must have done something. And, and that might be the same reason that that wasn't able to go into the Hottest 100 that year too. Because if they did... Oh, I have no... I'm completely making that up. That could be bullshit too. I don't know. Yeah. No idea. I was thinking about the Rubens, but they're like Jewish New Yorkers eating Ruben sandwiches. 
<laughs> They're from <Right>. Wollongong. Right. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> not. Hello. Jewish New Yorkers. Hey, we're the Rubens. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> we're, we're delighted to have the number one song. We, who would have thought? Uh, honestly, who would have thought that we'd have the number one song with us? Uh, Few fellas from the gong. You Can you do I mean? like a Cuban accent? I think they eat Rubens a bit, don't they? Uh, oh no, no, is it uh, Louisiana? You're thinking of the does. Cubans. Cuban Rubens. No, the Cubans. Know. Oh, that's, that's actually very good. You're thinking of all the right, Cubans. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I think. Um, I think even a couple years ago, because the hottest one, they've been doing um, like a version. Like a versions for years and years, though. Oh, back to like the nineties, I think. Maybe even oh, longer. Wow, that, that yeah, it's, it's, it's a long. Yeah. I think it's an old, old tradition. I'm pretty sure. Mm. And maybe this is st- such a nostalgic generation. Mm. You know what I mean? Like we love talking about old Simpsons episodes. That's we true. We're so about. ingrained in like nostalgia. I think yeah, because we grew nowadays. up from the nineties yeah. with media in our hands and technology was evolving and everything. So we've grown up. And it's so ingrained in us. Yeah. So now, yeah, I think you're right. When we hear this band, who we know now, cover this song from the past, it's like perfect. It is, yes. Yeah, it's, and it's that's why like it's a problem. Because mm. before they were just covering this song by this other band from Sydney. We're a band from Sydney. We're covering this other band from Sydney. No one's really that famous. Interesting. Triple J is not that big. But you also need to get the right band for the song too, where they change it just enough where it kind of is a little bit of a cover, right? Well, right, they, well then yeah. I, don't know, I don't know. I don't know that much about music, but you, you can't just give like, like if some heavy band went in there, you wouldn't just give them "Here Comes the Sun," right? Because it's gonna, it's not gonna be the same. It's not gonna be this. It's not gonna resonate the same with people if some band who plays heavy rock. Is oh, doing but then you that kind of works. Per- it's it's you get to this point where it works perfectly. Yeah, it's kind of like the Marilyn Manson. Sweet but how many of them? Stuff like that. How many of them are, of the ones that have really hit? have been really countery. Like, I get Cher, DMAs do a couple of songs where they're really slow and he has like a big, wide range in his voice. Yeah. So that's not really a million miles off. Mm. Yeah. The the Chet Faker and the Lover one, that's like that beat. It's very much like... It's not exactly like the music, but it's not a million miles off either. No. They're not getting like ska bands to do like pop songs. It's still... True, true. And there used to be more of that. There used to be more of people like a band would get a song and they would have to re- rework it a bit because it didn't suit their... I feel like they don't do that as much anymore. You they know, the they more, s- the, stay in a line. The more you're talking about it, the more I'm like, yeah, I do feel like they might be pushing it. Yeah. Because it's it, a whole angle that's very strong at the moment. My only thing that's like, why would they need... If you're listening to The Hottest 100, you're a fan of Triple J. If or you're your a fan, friends are, but yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, fair. But, but still, if your fans are Triple J, then you know about like a version. Yeah. What well, they need to promote? It. Mm, that's Unless they're like getting royalties mm, or some shit, but that's a whole different conspiracy. But you got to think of content as well. Like every Friday, they get the, they bring the cameras and stuff out, and and it's it's on their f- social media and it's on all that uh, stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's pushing you beyond radio because they're also looking at it where lots of young kids a huge amount of their market's tradies because they're listening to the radio all day when they're at work you know what I mean yeah and and tradies are young like a lot of guys once they get to my age will get off the tools like once Mm. you're kind of getting towards 30 so it's a big market for sure but for the people that aren't going on trade sites and aren't listening to the radio throughout the day you've got to find a way to reach them too and the the band that they like covering some song that their mum used to play them it's or the, whatever it's even like the perfect you get the older the older dudes on like a trade and site and everyone's kind of like coming together yeah. to be like you guys don't know anything about this song and you're like oh what is it it's like, I love it and you kind of like are coming together with the music it is yeah. kind of like a perfect thing it's probably their yeah. their biggest um, the way to interact with like an international audience an international market yeah, as well that's probably true because well. no one in Sweden's listening to the hottest 100 but everyone's seen, I guess, like Childish Gambino cover or whenever. Uh, it can become more of a thing. Dude, my girlfriend yeah. didn't even speak English growing up and she knows those songs that they're covering. Dang, yeah. Like, right. she used to listen to those songs in English and she didn't know the words. Here mm. comes the song. They're yeah. sh- fucking huge. Yeah. yeah, well, it's the Beatles. She yeah, can like still that. listen to that, having not yeah. even known English till she was 15 and yeah. it resonates with her. True. They're so wide-reaching. And mm-hmm. they are sticking bands along the line-ish of the of the original song because it does so much better. You know what's a great exception to that? Was um, Denzel Curry 
you know, the rapper yeah. doing Bulls on Parade oh, by yeah. Rage Against the Machine. That sounds good. And it's a rap song, but he is screaming it like the singer of a rock band. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's giving it the same sort of energy. It Did it win last year? Or it got really high up. Ridiculous. Oh, like in the hottest number, 100. Yeah, like oh, number yeah, three or really? something. Yeah, like that. Right. that sounds cool. But I yeah. Think. See, yeah. I say all this. I'm not like deep in the music world or anything like that. It's just my cynicism. Like it's not. But I still believe that they they like to get their name to the front of the list as quick as they can. Mm, I thought it was a bit yeah. of a cop out though. Like they should have technically given it to Kid Leroy. I thought that was just the song of the year. Do you know what I mean? It would have been the first Indigenous artist to ever win the hottest 100. He's a Sydney It was like, just yeah, like a perfect song, and they just yeah. could. It would have been a really good look versus the Wiggles, whose career is made and has been for like forty years or something. I yeah. know, and it comes across as just like a bit memey, a bit silly. It kind of. I agree. In, in mm. a certain extent, like ruins the legitimacy of of the brand when it was just a very easy, just tap it in, give it to Kid Leroy. He's like the the hometown hero. Everyone kind of would have liked it. And it just would have been a good look. They should do it. They should do it. You're only allowed to vote if you're between 16 and 30. Because if it's youth radio, that that's what it should be. Because mm. the in a way, I'm sure the <coughs> votes don't necessarily reflect the actual people that listen to the radio station fully either. Mm. Because you've got people that want that golden ticket. People like... Dang, they're incentivizing They're incentivized to, to go in. Yeah. Yeah. So... That's yeah, the the wiggles the the maybe that's why like versions have started to go up on it more because oh, it is no those people the songs, it I is the like people that aren't that. listening yeah. to the young stuff as much anymore but still want to be able to go to every festival of the year for free. <sighs> yeah. and the, it's the easy pick. It's like oh, I'm so old, I don't know any of these songs. The, yeah, wiggles, the wiggles, what? No, that's hilarious. Let's choose. And that. which song was it that they covered? That won it? Elephant. Yeah, it's Tam and Paul song. It's fucking Tam and Paul song. Yeah, everyone fucking loves Tam. That's true. Everyone kind of loves. I just yeah. do think. It would have been easy to give it to Kid Leroy. It would have been the. Oh, I completely agree. Like it's. Who else was in the top ten? I swear it was like Doja Cat. I think Ocean Alley were. If they could have said Triple J's the Kid Leroy, he oh, would have won it. Yeah, is what I'm saying. If they could have gone up there and gone Triple J's the Kid Leroy, that's true. And or even, formerly yeah. of Triple J's Kid Leroy, Kid Leroy then, probably wouldn't even answer their text nowadays. Yeah. He'd be yeah. like, "Oh, I won the hottest 100." Who gives a fuck? He would have. He made would, a song yeah. with Justin Bieber. I know, yeah. yeah. And it's like ridiculous amount of views and plays. Like, yeah, it was. It's probably like one of the biggest songs to come out of Australia, probably of all time. The other interesting in thing is how many of those Since songs. Kylie. They're all like Triple J. Uh, sorry, TikTok songs. Yeah, it's crazy the impact TikTok has had on music. Oh, it's but it kind of makes sense because what yeah. like you attribute the, like these feelings from this video to this song. And then you listen to the TikTok song in real life and you're like, oh, it's just kind of like, you're going to listen to it twice as much as if yeah. it was just a normal song. And they're great pop songs too. Great song. I love all those TikTok songs. Everyone was yeah. complaining about there's too many TikTok, TikTok songs in there, but it's like, I love them. Because they just yeah. have good music. This is what you talk. We were talking about this before with the comedy thing about how um, you guys were saying with Jimmy Carr about how it becomes a formula at some point. Right. The, it's the same deal with the TikTok song, wrong? Right? It is a formula. They're all following a formula. It's just the the same thing, uh, but it's shuffled and it's different. But it, they're will, thinking about the video. They're it thinking will about the dance. Work. Yeah, they will always work. They put hours and hours and hours in to figure out what people like. Mm. It's the same as Jimmy Carr's on hours and hours and hours of figuring out how to make these jokes work. They've scientifically tailored this thing to be exactly what people want it to be. So when they start making music out of it, of course it's going to be popular. Because they already know what people like. Mm. Oh, but it's, I think it just in its, like from the ground level, it's a trend. Yeah. It's let's like say someone d does this funny dance or has this funny video and puts the song and it's trending straight away. Yeah. That's I think I half of it. it is from the song. It's like, oh, this song. And they get like the best part from that song. And then everyone can kind of be like, oh, I like this song. What's going on in the video? Essentially, mm. the whole thing is just built on one person gives a sh the structure of a joke and then a million people rip it off mm. like tell me you're gay without telling me you're gay or and uh, tell me your your my name's jackson grant without telling me your name's <laughs> Good gay to meet you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah you get yeah, what i mean like it's course. it's just a formula and it's just a one there's one admittingly there's one person who starts a trend mm. but then yeah. the whole thing is just a trend it the whole thing's hack mm. or like, is it or is it perfect that's the thing with like something trending. Is it perfect? 
Or could it be deemed as hacky? And I think it is sometimes... The first guy isn't hack. Yeah. And the, the next maybe couple aren't hack either. But it becomes hack very quickly. And then that's ha- That's why it dies off so quick. Because then you get like the the last people, like the, the strugglers. And, like, the, it's a crazy frog. Yeah. I guess as soon as you see someone over yeah. 30 doing or associating with that song, it's like, I don't want to listen to it anymore. I don't, I'm not going to do this dance. It's, it's like become too Facebook. common or... Even I'm finding it's, um, let's say with Facebook, the, yeah. like the young people aren't on Facebook anymore. And you're seeing it kind of with Instagram, they made that shift. And I'm finding less and less people are posting on Instagram and they're just doing the stories. I think people are still posting, but as well, even if people are posting, it's not getting what it used to for yeah, likes. Yeah, I know. And I think because you're not getting the likes and stuff, you're just forced to go to the stories. I think young people are waiting now. for the next thing. And uh, I guess we've already moved on to TikTok. Yeah, which kind of sucks. But I guess it's the future. I can see oh, we're the. Just getting old, bro. That's all it oh, is. We're getting old. Just getting old. Which I'm is. Like... I think most girls like TikTok. Interesting. Not even young. My girlfriend, yeah. No? She's obsessed with it, yeah. Oh, she oh yeah. No, oh, she's yeah. not obsessed with it, but when she goes on it, she gets sucked into it. And it great. drives me nuts. It, the noise of it, and like, it drives me nuts. It is great, though. There's there's <coughs> funny, there's everything, and they're just short 10-second videos. It's tailored to you, of course. Like, everyone one. thinks it's great. I don't like the home screen. I don't like how it's set up. That's the thing about TikTok. I don't like to go on the app and be forced to see a video and kind of not have as much control. I don't like how people can't just sit and watch a game of sports or a movie anymore or whatever. It's like, too hard. The double screening, bro, it's so fucking oh, annoying. I, I have, I hate it. I have I probably 70 tabs it. open at all times. Yeah. I fucking hate it. But if I'm watching a movie today. with my girlfriend... I'll, and she keeps bringing her phone out. I'll, I'll turn I'll it I'll hit her. I know. Hit her. <laughs> I'm not really a violent guy, but I will hit her. You've got to do it every now yeah, and then. Yeah, do you know what I mean? I'll no, no, I'll just yeah. turn the TV off and go, all right, let's see what your phone's got oh, to offer for funny. entertainment. You're literally I was like, getting, that's the old man move. I was like, yeah, come on, let's do it. Let's put the phone on the table. We'll just go through your phone together. And she's like reading the actual... So you pick the fucking movie. Like, why the fuck am I just going to sit here and watch it? Yeah. Just put a phone... I've got a little stand. We'll even get the stand out. I can watch you scroll. Let's just how, do that how old, is, how old is she? She's, uh, she's 25. Oh, so she's young. I mean, sorry, she's, she's old. She's three years younger than me. Yeah, yeah, she's kind of old. Yeah. And but she's, she's still on that... Thing. So I guess TikTok's two or three years old. So she was 22 when it came uh, out. So she was right at that. Yeah. I got... When it first came out, mm. I made one in the yeah. first couple of weeks or whatever or yeah. maybe I don't know how long I got into it it was I made one though yeah. but I just never let the algorithm I never have been on there enough for the algorithm to figure me out yeah me either I, yeah. I've probably got it on my phone now but just if I go in there like there'll that. be 20 things my brother's sent me mm. but I just haven't it's a lot more censored too even on IG oh. you can still find silly silly memes that are funny oh so they're censoring the stuff on TikTok like the comedy and stuff oh you know what i did i followed it's a bunch insane. of like cringe pages on tiktok oh, okay where they were just reposting yeah tiktok's great and i think that's like the the humor of the youth is like that cringe cringe posting and kind of finding mm. the cringe and stuff like that I'm you guys that. should have good careers then i know we're gonna actually <laughs> <laughs> that's why we are actually such a successful podcast yeah because we constantly get posted on twitter and you're like hey look at these two hacks think they're yeah just racist accents funny you guys do kind of look like a like a retarded buddy cop movie. We <laughs> love to end up doing. We were going for a regular buddy cop movie. Yeah, but that's, no, it's that's just like on a huge budget. <laughs> yeah, that would actually be a it pretty good be. look. Yeah, you could I'd make like a that. good movie. We should start working on it. We get a screenplay. I together. know. You try to think of like a yeah a buddy cop. What could we do? It could be called kind of like um um. Jackson, Jackson and the gay guy. Ah, uh, no, and it's opposite day. They're trying to like change the not. day back to normal, and that's like the goal. <laughs> like, because we know this is completely wrong. Because Karim's not the gay guy. It's obviously Jackson, and we spent the whole. And the time movie's about to... me in a mirror. And it's called Jackson and the Gay Guy. <laughs> All right, that's good. Um, I think yeah. we did have. Uh, we also wanted to talk about um, this whole one drink minimum debate. Oh yeah. yeah Actually let's pause that's a fun Let's pause for a tick before Pause right. Okay we'll have a bit of a break Yeah Let's do it right, Let's do it uh-huh. Let's do it boom, boom, <laughs> Straight back into accents We are trying to work on our French accents We have been spending a break Trying to work on our French accents uh, What is it What were we talking about I think oh, we the, are The one drink to... minimum Oh like, yeah I am going to do the rest of I am going to do the rest of the conversation In my French accent That sounded Russian <laughs> I know it did <laughs> 
Because you know what the issue with, with French, you got yeah. French African, and then you got French Canadian. How are you going today? Yeah, but French people <laughs> don't really consider them French. <laughs> really? Oh no, they looked they looked down on them worse than the pommies looked down on us. Kidding? Yeah. The French Canadians. Oh yeah, they think they're garbage. I thought the French Dang. Canadians thought they were like hot stuff. Or like, what? I guess they yeah. think they. Oh, yeah, I guess. Th- yeah. Yeah, because probably because they still speak French and shit. But yeah, and all the street signs apparently like in French and like. They're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We're yeah. the best. We took over we the are, world. We are the and best. Then, and then you've got French Canada, and they're like, I hate those guys. <laughs> <laughs> I hate those the guys. French people, even though I am French myself. Oh, the French Canadians hate French people. No, the other way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The French hate the French Canadians. <laughs> we hate the French Canadians. Like, well, I don't why know. would you hate us? We did nothing wrong to you. The French Canadians might hate the French too. I have no idea. Well, French people, there's, there's a lot of hatred involved, I think, just from all angles. What do you feel about English people in general? Because I'm not very fond of them. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like the English? Not particularly. Well, so no. I, think, I think English people are great. I think they may be the greatest. Well, that's I think part of the, the fun. The greatest culture ever. Like, again, you've got, let's say... Music, comedy. No, you've got Australian, English, American, Canadian, in terms of these kind of, like, white Western cultures. How would you rank them all? In yeah. terms of just good people, kind of, like... Just as a as a person, how if you like talking about they? art and stuff no, like no, that. No, no, not even... No. Forget about art. No, forget okay. about influence. Um, just as people, as human beings. Are they good people? I think you'd probably have English one, Australians probably number two. I'd have Kiwis one. Oh, Kiwi. I'd probably go Kiwi. I you don't even Kiwis, know. I can't stand I'd their probably... silly accents. <laughs> That's the only thing about Not their that. art, not their I'll culture. We're really ranking their <laughs> accents. No, just their people. I think as a person, you got to stop with that silly voice. They're the so chill, but... Kiwis, yeah, Kiwis are so chill. They are pretty chill. Yeah, Kiwis are the best. Are Australians British are people? pretty great, though. Most of them are British, yeah. Australians are pretty great. Australians but again, I great. think British people are very funny and bantery, and I like the banter. I like that, though. That's yeah. part of the reason that I say that I hate them, too, though. Oh, because you think they they're get better than us. That. Yeah, they get into that. I they it. like it. You think they... Uh, you know, and most of my yeah. family is Welsh and Irish, so there was always that... Not that I don't like English people. I'm right there with them. But it's just the fun thing of, ah, oh, fuck the pommies. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. But in reality... It's not just, genuine hate. They want to be them. I mm. like ribbing them. And I'm a big cricket guy too, so... Oh, that's the, true. Okay. I go for Australia yeah. and whoever's playing bias. England. That kind of thing, yeah. So what would your ranking go? All of the different um, places. I like Americans. I think they get a bad rap. I, I really? I can't stand Americans. Have you been there? Yeah. Yeah? And you well, didn't it like felt them? like I was in hell. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. It actually felt like I was in actual hell. I was like, why is everyone acting so strange? And that why could be a skin so color thing. I don't know. Even black Americans. Every, they're just, the thing about Americans, they're kind of, they're fake. They're acting like there's a camera in front of them. They're not genuine. They're kind of creepy. They have strange ideas. Oh, <laughs> me and my mate, we, we had the, we, I had a great experience in America. Like really? people would hear your Australian accent. And they'll just come up and sit down next to you. They'd buy you beers. They'd mm. talk to you all night. They were so well. And like we did, uh, we did New York to Coachella. Uh, mm. We had a, took a month to get from New York to Coachella. Oh my god! And we did uh, New Orleans and Denver and Vegas. They Gosh. were the main spots <laughs> that we stopped shit. at on the way there. And in your experience, was just great the whole way. I had two bad I- I- encounters in it. 31 really? days one and and both of them were people working in bus stops so they're probably just oh, hating okay. their life it's fucking two in the morning and i'm grilled as fuck buying 20 sandwiches off you i'd probably be pissed as well so you think they're better than australians oh probably not but okay like yeah i guess the problem with america is there's a big range you get like <gasps> yeah but i don't know I, I when i was there i was so hospitable i had such right. a nice time americans here though no, normally you find americans that travel are just the richest the ones oh, that have got the easiest lives. Yeah. So they oh. can be real fucking cunts. I'm not like... Yeah. I don't yeah. like that. You don't really get yeah. that with the English. It's not like people loaded with money gallivanting the world. Mm. They're pretty down to earth. But yeah. the people, that, the Americans that are getting on planes and going everywhere... Oh, you've got a point. That's probably... I think I've seen Americans kind of like around the world as well and they're the worst people yeah. ever. <laughs> but if you're in some fucking tiny little town in the South, you'd be amazed how really? hospitable they were. Again... Again, could, I would... Could be yeah, a skin color thing a little bit. Because when I was in America, <laughs> I was pulled over and killed. Yeah. yeah no, so that was probably the difference. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, so your ranking would go Kiwi number one. Because yeah. I think I've got... I think I've probably got... British number one, Australia number two, then probably Kiwi. 
and then I'd probably do Canadian and then probably Americans. I would say, yeah, probably Kiwi and then I would go maybe Canadian because they're just nice. Like okay. they are just mm. nice people. I think they're I better than us. They probably are just nicer. Okay. Like I think that's kind of lame. I've heard but Canada would... is like Australia and America's got that weird edge to it. There's something going on there. But what? Canada is... In Canada it does. Yeah, because it's all national media and shit like that. Mm. Like they've just got a national station. You can tune yeah, in. Right. The TV stations are the same and whatever. Everyone's right. tuned into a similar kind of thing. America, it's like the states are fucking divided. Yeah, Everyone's true. so different. That's true. Every You're country has different laws and like America's yeah. crazy like that. Yeah. I always get so confused yeah. at like how close like Toronto is to New York. That's it's crazy. crazy. It's like to a me. two hour drive it's or something. Insane. It's insane. Yeah. And like the, there's just not much back and forth. What like do you mean? If I, I just, I, I think just naturally people from Toronto don't really leave. People from New York would never really go to Toronto much. Oh, you hear stories mm. of guys when they're 18, 19, 20 from Boston and that go and they all go to Canada. Oh, really? Because that's where you can drink. Oh, it's 18 there. So they all do. That's their boys weekends. All those northern dudes. Isn't it funny? America might be the latest drinking age I could really think of. Other than like those yeah. countries that don't let you drink. Saudi Arabia. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, true. Yeah, America's pretty terrible. You know, they drink it like 21. Do you know what I mean? But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my They're friend, like, you are not allowed to drink here. Please, when yeah. can I drive? And it's like, when you're 200, you can drive, <laughs> sweetie. Okay? Let's That's just the say, driving age here. Sweetie, let's just say you can drive when you're 138. <laughs> then you can drive me anywhere you want. <laughs> yeah. But until then, uh, I will be doing the driving here. I'm not even sure what that accent I, is. I don't, I'm not even really sure what it is either. It's some sort of a Saudi Arabian Dubai sort of oh, yeah? accent. I thought it was I thought it was decent. Yeah, I'm, I guess I'm not travelled enough to really I know. I don't even know. It's a, not a good accent. Why is so. England number one? I think they're great. I think they're probably... From being over there. Yeah, or even just kind of the, the banter element. That's like, fine. I think they're quite genuine people. Like... Um, they're kind of funny. They're, they're quick to kind of play around and joke around. Actually, did I say Australia number two? Yeah, I think Australia number two. Mm. I think they just might beat us culture-wise. See, I would well, put, yeah. I would put yeah. England and Australia more on the same boat. Whatever right. level they are, I think they're about the same. Yeah. I don't think we're really that... Di- I think we're a little bit more relaxed because we've been in the sun for a while. That's but true. I think that's really the only difference between Australian and English people. Yeah, it's I don't so, think so It's so common. similar. I don't yeah. think it's really any different. I think that's probably why it's... Um, but anyway, into the one drink minimum debate. Yeah, so there's this new oh, there's this new issue ravaging the Sydney comedy scene. Yes, it's uh, contentious. Yeah, it's the biggest the, the biggest probably the, the biggest discussion kind of in the comedy scene. Friend of Pod, young right boy now. Huey Phillips. Yes, started a room. They also started. Call it. They had a room there before, right? They had a room there before lockdown with. I don't remember who. They had it with someone else, but it was booked. And then when it came back this time, he went there and was like, I want to make it an open mic because Huey kept saying there wasn't enough open mics. I want to make it an open mic. And they said, the only only way we're going to do it is if there is a one drink minimum because open micers just come here and they have water and they leave and no one wants to sit and watch them because they're insane. I heard that Huey went there and said, I want to do an open mic. And they're like, yeah, fine, let's do it. What night do you want? And then he said, I also want to charge one drink minimum. <laughs> <laughs> that was That's a pretty good uh, Huey. <laughs> nah, there's also got to be a one drink minimum. <laughs> you got to go more monotone. You got to go more monotone. <laughs> but that's what I've heard. Uh, I've yeah. heard it was very different. And yeah. people, I, I, I don't know where I've heard this, but some comics are calling him Dewey Phillips. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I've heard that from. Well, I, but, uh, I'm pro that nickname. Uh, I, I think we're all that pro that nickname <laughs> yeah. because of the one drink minimum. But, but you I have to buy it off me. <laughs> no, I don't. Well, it's easy for me to say anyway because I'm going to drink a beer every time I'm there anyway. That's true. But and so your stance is it's fine. But it's almost like dude, we can't take your dude. Point if, of view. if 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 would you rather have to go and buy a coke to get on stage or have nowhere to get on stage for open mic? Yeah. Now. Mm. Say what you will, like open mic is important. You're not going to get booked on shows straight away. Yep. You need somewhere to go and you need somewhere to try stuff. Yes. So if the difference between having that and not having that is everyone having to buy a beer, then fine. I guess, yeah. The idea, I do understand that side where it's like 
if this isn't going to happen, this, this is not going to happen at all. It's not yeah. like it's Huey sitting there going, you've got to give me five bucks to get on stage. Hell on, give no, me people five, are making give me it out on that group. Yeah. There's people in that group that never even fucking go to open mics anyway, just bitching because yeah. for, I don't even know why. Well, why? that's the big argument is that some people have the idea that comics are bringing in money to the pub. Well, what open mic bring yeah. money? And I guess it, and that's it would a, probably almost turn people away. Yeah, a lot way. of people are different saying, than music. <laughs> a lot of people yeah. are saying like, no, comics don't buy shit. To my experience, they don't really. You're on a trivia night. You'll get. You'll make ten yeah, times as much more money. Of course. Or and maybe not ten, musicians. but at least five. Because mm. you get trivia. At least one person on the table will get like a bowl of chips. They're all yeah. gonna have a couple of beers. It's and it's the same deal. You got the microphone, and you've only got to give a guy probably fifty bucks and and some beers to run the show, which yeah. is probably what you're doing for an open mic anyway to pay a host to get it through. I don't even know. if... Maybe not at Crown or so, whatever, but right. at a certain point, a lot of open mics, the, the ones where they're making you put your name down and shit, the host mm. there's getting 50 bucks. Yeah, because the thing is, at Crown even, is known to be great. Like, they do like know. $200 know. for a hosting thing. Do you know what I mean? They've, they've kind of always done that. They've done a 200 thing, and they usually like let, let the host know like a week in advance and stuff. <laughs> I just thought it was like a pretty good thing that they do at Crown. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's what I kind of like hope I'll I don't want to I'll make any shit up. He's day. talking shit. I don't want to make any shit up about money or nothing because I don't know how the money actually works. But if you're going to do a book show and you're going to pay, you could pay that money, it, uh, like a book show open mic level, you could pay the same money, you get a trivia dude in and like make way more money for the pub. And you don't have to hear Lachlan McAllister talk about a Jewish conspiracy. Yep, exactly. And it's hear, not going to turn anyone away. You don't have to hear any open mics. Yeah. You don't have to hear any of them. Mm. You know what else is great about it? A side benefit is you're only going to get people that are keen. There's an incentive to buy something. You're right, you're right. right. So a lot of people are making the argument, what, now I have to pay to get up. You know what I mean? And And I kind of get that angle where it's like we're taking advantage of the creatives. It's like you shouldn't be forced to pay to, to kind of get better at your craft. Dude, if you want to be in a band, go and pick up a fucking guitar. This is part of the deal. You can't. I guess yeah, it's, it's the one. It's the one um, outlet where you don't have to pay for anything. I guess being a yeah. comic, we yeah, can't like don't. Yeah. We don't have any. There's the only way you can figure out how to do it is to get up in front of people and do it. Mm. So if they're asking for four bucks, then go and sit on the fucking corner and beg for four bucks if you have to mm. before you get up there. How much do you really give a fuck? Yeah, no, that's yeah. a good point. I do really get. Fuck them. I don't how, give a fuck they, about their bitching. How do they monitor it as well? I don't think they really do. Are they walking around going, hey, have you bought something today? No, well, when I... like, no, I'm going to in half an hour. No, Get off I, my back. What if... The thing is, what if you I... What if I go to a no. club and I identify as someone who's bought a drink? <laughs> I think that's a little bit of uh, an area that hasn't really been tackled with this. I'm going to go to Huey's show yeah. and I'm going to walk in and say, I identify as someone who's bought a drink. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to see what he says. I, when I bought a drink and they gave me a raffle ticket and I put it in the fucking bucket upstairs. I gave it to Huey or whatever when I got upstairs. So I don't know how oh, that's closely... that's how it works. Yeah, I don't know how closely they're monitoring it. I have no idea. Interesting. Well, again, Huey doesn't give... He doesn't care. He couldn't care less. He's not this, like, Nazi that everyone's making him out to be. That's it's why like I this... felt so bad for him at one point because oh. people were going at him on there. I know Good, they bro. were. Good, let, let them know his name. Let he's him a, know he's something. No, but it's a bit sad because it's kind of almost tarnishing his image. It's like, yeah, he's this guy who's trying to ruin... I guess if there are a handful Bro, of comics who don't like this idea, he's like the figurehead for it. Anyone that matters, anyone that's booking the room is going to be like... Anyone that's booking a different room understands the mechanics of the pub needs to get money. Yeah. The venue needs money. So yeah, they would see Huey doing that and be like... What the hell are you talking about? No, I think the people who who were seen from the other side don't see behind. Yeah, it's the like scenes punting and, and shit. It's, it's like that crazy punting dude and oh, shit. Yeah, who, this is actually, another big. Thing. I don't even Who's, know who this. It wasn't even him because he got minimums? banned. He got banned out of the Open Mike Sydney group. Apparently, the punting dude. Is, is punting against the drink minimums? Uh, I don't know if there was that much. Ch- so there was the. Were you guys in the writing class group or whatever? Writing class. Someone. So. Mm. Oh uh, yeah, the the. Ranky the, started like yeah. a. A writing class kind of room. Yeah. Yes, I've, I, I'm in that, and I know Lachlan McAllister is a uh, he's an admin, admin. Yes. and Ra- him and Tim Rankmar as well. Yeah. So it started as just like a, I think Tim started it as like a let's workshop bits before we put them up. Exactly. And yeah. then at some point, Punton got in there, and then <laughs> he started just like 
Yeah. But yeah, for you the backstory, like this, this, there's a character, this guy called Punton. I don't know who he is. He's a real person. I was yeah. messaging everyone. I, I don't know that many people in the Sydney comedy scene, but I was messaging as many people as I could because I thought he was like some comic from Sydney who was like established had made a troll account and put himself oh. in the group. And there's a guy called someone Punton. I don't know what what's the what's but his name. But he's a real guy. But he's an he actual person. He goes to Crown and he's like 60 years old and that That's... photo is from like 25 years oh, ago so it was or a something. 60-year-old man called someone Punton who's on this page interacting what and posting his What does his activity consist of? What's it's he It's crazy, doing? man. Someone put a, a video of Bill Hicks half an hour set on and he started criticizing it in the comments. <laughs> So he just doesn't have taste? Is that the... Yeah, so he's... he's but it's not just that. He's like... He'll, he'll, he'll like post bits. It's just got that whole thing. You start a Facebook group about anything, you're going to attract some crazy people. Mm. If I went and started one right now about the fucking Sydney... Whatever sports team it was or whatever music thing yeah. or whatever, you'd find some old person who probably doesn't have that much going in their life and just wants to sit on Facebook and take over the whole thing. Yeah, right. And that's essentially what's just happened. So right. some, it, whether it was someone else posting and him just smashing them in the comments, just, this is my thoughts, this is my thoughts, this is my thoughts. And not like two lines, like a, a paragraph or like him being like, well, the problem with this is, or like, yeah. it was always just something, man. Or there wouldn't be enough stuff posting. And then he, yeah. and he, he obviously understands how a Facebook algorithm works. Because he's trying to make sure there's a certain amount of posts in the group every week, so it stays in everyone's feed. And is this this man, Daniel Punton, is he running? Was he running the page? He has at no all? Admin, admin or nothing. Oh, he has no admin. So, then so at, he's just a person. At using one it. point, McAllister, McAllister, it used to be Lockie, called Lockie McAllister, Lockie Mac. Yeah, it used yeah. to be called uh, uh, like Open Mic Help, or I don't remember what the fuck it was called. It was called yeah. something yeah. like that. And then McAllister changed it to. Um, Daniel Punton's joke, joke writing tips. Yeah. That's what he called the group. And then I saw that he kind of basically saw it as bullying. He's oh, like, he I don't know what's this, going on here. He Lachlan, posted this da, big da, 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 da. diatribe yeah. about how McAllister's, McAllister and all his friends are just bullies. Yes. Oh, shit. And yeah. in all honesty, it is kind of like a bullying angle. The guy's a psychopath. Yeah. But still, like, you it, can it's bully coming. Psychopaths. You can bully psychopaths. I think so that's fair. And you can bully anyone if you want. It's not against the rules. But he's an easy target, and then Lachlan's kind of changed the name. And it's very funny. Yeah. Because this is the guy that's kind of spamming this page, spamming no, this page. There's a difference between an easy target and an idiot. Like, if you're talking from a, a military perspective, mm. an easy target is some woman that you shouldn't shoot. He's not that. He's standing in front of the gun and jumping up and down. Mm. He wants the piss taken out of him, even if he doesn't realize. Interesting. It. It's a. He's not like an easy target. He's beyond that. He's, yeah, like you said, it doesn't even seem real. He's he attention seem like a real person. seeking. He yeah. wants what he's get. Like he wants that. Mm. What's he saying about Huey's room? I don't know if he said anything. It was more the people on the actual open mic, oh, Sydney people that went. In. I think right. there's a guy called Jet that went at him a bit, or Ace, or dude or he's got some weird name yeah it's like i don't want to say because uh, there's people by both that name in the open mic group and i don't want to chuck the other one in it throw them both them. in <laughs> but yeah <laughs> i don't know <laughs> either of them though to be honest of but one of them's just going in being like yeah i think that when it, it first got posted like legacy kyle legacy commented and just said like oh it's not new york dude this is a joke which is i think is fair enough but then some like which, if someone wants to comment that, that's just a comment, like, whatever. It's the more the people below, they're going into, well, the problem of comedy is they're profiting off this and this and this and this. And it's like, no one's profiting off this, dude. Look at the reality of this situation, bro. These people are giving us their venue to do a thing. Yeah, we wouldn't no even one have this, see, man. No one wants to see people work out jokes. No. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, it's not appealing for the average person on the street. It's let's like, get hey, a band. Open let's mic. get a band. We know we're going to sell this out. Yeah. 50 tickets and they're all going to get fuck eyed because mm. they've got three hours worth of music. Drinking goes hand in hand. Or you can have a room full of 20 open micers. Yeah. And let's are, remember, it's 21 dudes and maybe one chick. That's, yes. the, that's the 20 open micers. Mm. Of course. It's not a good energy for a room in a pub. Terrible. <laughs> it's not something that's yeah. hugely inviting. Yeah. I'm basically failing at life. Is yeah. What yeah. It is. There's a real energy of that in there, like hopelessness. Which yes. it, I think to the average person walking and getting a drink, they'll be like, oh, I can feel the hostility in this room. What's I've been, going on that's here? attractive to me, but it's I've not, been, it. it's not it's an it's enticing situation for a lot of people. Yeah, for the average person. You get a yeah. band, you get a few chicks at the oh, front, and all goodness. of a sudden people are streaming into the pub. Yeah. Yeah. It's a different situation. I've seen even at Crown, 
um, where it's just all these dude comics in there. Yeah. Such a weird energy, and there's a guy that... I, I, I honestly don't know this guy, so... No, no, let's go ahead and say his name. Well, you can always cut it out. We drop, no, we, we drop names. All right, so I'm, I'm standing at the bar kind of thing. I've just got my drink, I'm watching, and then this guy walks up really awkwardly. Yeah. He's like, hi, kind of thing, to the chick that was working there. And was like, oh, I'll just get da 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 da. And I'm. Oh, he's on stage saying this. No, no, no. He oh. walked up to the bar. Right, right. I'll get da 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 da. Also, I'm sorry for what I said earlier. Like, while he was on stage, he he just went at the bar staff. He said oh, something to the bar staff. Oh, yeah. And then he walks up and apologizes, and she's kind of like, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, she's still off it. So whatever he said must have been bad, oh, and the right. people working criticizing at the venue, and talking about the bar staff in general isn't really a good isn't really a good look. This isn't it's, her job, bro. Yeah, it's this not. I know she doesn't. For. She doesn't want to hear you at the end of the at the end of the night. This isn't a yeah. comedy club. This yeah. is just a, a venue. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't really have a problem with the with the drink minimum. There's a yeah. lot of reasons why it's fine. Unless Dude, happen- it's just somewhere to get up, man. Yeah. It's just somewhere to get or up. Not. You you need to have open mics. If you don't want to, yeah, don't. It's but. like, oh yeah, we've got this restaurant here. It's like, oh, there's only five restaurants on this street, right? Yeah. And that one's really expensive. Yeah. You know what I mean? The rest of them I can go and get a meal for like 10 bucks. That's like my perspective. As corkage? Yeah, you know, you go to a Chinese restaurant, you got to pay like five bucks to drink your own beers there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know what yeah. I mean? It's like yeah, a- of course, of course. Yeah, it's an interesting one. And I guess, yeah, it, it's pretty hard to understand the the other side, especially considering that there are... Unless unless every single um, room starts to adopt this principle, that's when it may become Dude, an issue. Dude, even if, if, if there's four open mics a week yeah, and you have to buy a beer at each of them to get up, and that's the only way it exists, then... Or you, you buy a soft drink, three or four dollars. If that's what has to happen... It's better than not getting up. Yeah, I don't the know alternative about that. Is, I don't know about that. Okay, well, yeah. the, alternative, the alternative is wait four months for someone to eventually book you and then after that, hope that you have a good set and then hope that within the next two months, someone books you again. Mm, I can just see the angle of like... Because this is probably what is going to happen is the other rooms will all start to have a one drink minimum. Maybe. There's no way Crown I guess Crown I don't will. know. There's you don't no think way Crown, Crown. Crown will start do, doing no, that? There's no Cause way. Because that's, that's the thing. Like, as long as there are rooms that are still... You can just kind of get in anyone off the street and just get up and tell your jokes. I think it's fine. I think it's I think it's bullshit that people... Are, like, if you, if you got a guitar, would you complain about having to pay for guitar lessons? Because mm. it would be pretty dumb if that's what you did. Maybe the thing is, is they've gotten it for free before, so now they're like, why? Why do I have to pay for it? It's now? like music, I guess. Yeah. yeah. You, okay. So your chick was teaching you how to play guitar, and she went and sucked someone else's dick, and she fucked off, and now you got to pay someone. But if you really want to learn guitar, then that's just what you have to do. Is mm. my yeah. yeah. You're speaking a lot of truth, man. Like yeah. it's it's a, it's a very tricky argument. I don't really see the other side. I can. I'm I trying can, to get to the other side know, as much as yeah. I can and see where it's coming from. So just from. to clarify, you're with me. Is that what you're saying? Or you're yeah. with him? Yeah, you're with me. Oh, no, you two I, agree. I'm, I'm basically, We're all together. I'm basically okay, right. with We're all you. Together. Yeah, but okay. I kind of... I, I'm i also like... I can understand why someone can have an issue with it. I think they're... I'm not too fond of the idea that, let's say, every single open mic becomes one drink minimum. The minute that there's 10, 15 people in the crowd watching... Yeah, and they're trying to make you pay to get up. Then I'm like, all right, this is bullshit. But whilst ever there's no one in these crowds, bro, then mm. what's the incentive for the pub to do it? Oh, of course, and I can completely. So I, I know, yeah. And as soon as you, like straightforward like that. As yeah. soon as there's 10, 15 crowd members, I'm completely with you. They yeah. should never be making you put anything in yeah. to, to performing because you've you, there's a draw. Now whether yeah. the draw is you or the room, that doesn't matter. There's yeah. a draw. People are coming to the pub to see it. Yeah. Therefore, it's worth the pub putting it on. But whilst ever there is no one watching, mm. you have to incentivize the yes. venue in some way. I think that's a good yeah, way. I think that's happen. a very good way to put it. Because I think what can happen is uh, these comics start to see like big audiences and there's still a one drink minimum and da 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 da. Yeah. And then that can become an issue. If it is just like, like in Huey's situation, a club that really doesn't want to have this can make money doing anything else under the sun. Yeah. It's like, yeah, we'll do it, but. You, We'll do it if you have to do the one drink minimum. If you yeah, do yeah, really yeah. want to break I it can, down, you could be like, all right, there's a band. 
we're going to pay 600 bucks, 200 bucks each for a band. Mm. Okay. And then you've got a trivia host. It's like, all right, we've got to pay this guy $100 an hour to do this thing. And then you've got comedians. And you're like, okay, we won't pay any of them. Yeah. But they will, they will give us money as the bar. That's the only way I see that argument working. Yeah, interesting. Where it's like, it's like almost a conspiracy or some shit like that. But they're, but they're paying the band 200 bucks to bring Because people. they're going to make two grand on gonna the bar. Make, yeah, and they're, they're going to pay the, comedian, uh, the, the trivia guy 100 bucks because they're going to bring in 1,000. Like it's an investment. They're investing 100 to return 1,000. But they're not... If honest, you, you guys have been in enough open mics. How many people really drink at them? You got twenty there. Oh, pretty decent amount. Maybe and especially half. The, what happens? Maybe is half. You probably got. It Maybe split. half. I agree. Probably got it. Split. Maybe half. But then half of those comics are drinkers, and they're not just going to get one drink. Yeah, night. I normally put five or six. Do you know what I mean? And I kind yeah. of yeah. see that personally, just from going to these mics. I'm noticing that the ones who do drink drink like probably like yeah three or four. Three each, yeah. And that's where I can kind of see it does almost equal itself out. Yeah, to yeah, an extent. yeah. But then, in a way, there is not the. It's still the 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 premise is the same because if if a quarter of the people are drinking enough beers for everyone there to have had two, yeah, it's still mathematically it's same from the bar, right? Yeah, it, which I guess is the really leans to your point more of that you don't have to have a drink minimum, yeah, because, because you'll end comics, up selling that yeah, much anyway. Half, half of the comics are gonna go here and they're gonna buy drinks. Yeah. Even yeah. I think that depends it's, who it is though. That's cuz it's hugely varied. What's happening? I think oh, what was it? Where's Huey's room at? It's at um Glebe. Glebe. Uh, Glebe. Oh, it's in Glebe. Yeah, that's right. Nags head. Yeah. Nags head. Yeah. I was trying to think cuz you try to figure out is, is the room in an area where people aren't really going to buy or a little bit more cheap. And yeah. that's where I could kind of be like, yeah, we're going to have to make sure people are drinking. But if it is like a, a room kind of in the city, I'm you know, pretty confident, area. man. I'm, I heard the the only reason that it turned that they the venue was like, we are not doing an open mic. Yeah, we're doing a booked room. And Huey was like, I'm not doing a booked room. The only way I'm doing this is, is an open mic. Yeah, and, that's and cool. Because like, especially you know, just a few weeks ago, we only had. Um, we only had two open mics going and yeah. then, oh, three kind of because Sticks and Stones kind of came back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Miles' room was on a Monday and then there was Crown on Thursday. But like, and I loved Miles' room. I thought it was so fun. I thought it, the craziness was fucking awesome. I love that I love the room. And, and is there nothing on there now? I think something's coming back, but I don't know. I think Soon. people are fighting to try and get his spot, uh, to be honest, yeah. but I have no idea. Hopefully, Dewey Phillips doesn't come in charge of one drink minimum <laughs> because then I won't be performing on Monday nights. Dude, just yeah. come. I'll drink your fucking yeah, beer. Geez. I'll even pay for it. I'll give you your fucking ticket. I might have to give you my card to go down there so you can get the little coupon. <laughs> that's good. That's I don't good. give a fuck. I'll that's drink what, your that's beer. That's what probably people could do. Yeah, I'll tell. I'll drink anyone's. That's fine. Oh, I'm not going to drink. <laughs> I'm not going to drink everyone's beers. Yeah. But as long as it's like two or three, I don't mind. Yeah. Yeah, it's a one drink minimum, but we're also charging uh, two hundred dollars for a drink. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. only like the peatiest scotch in the world that you're allowed to get to perform. <laughs> yeah. We want sophisticated gentlemen talking in this venue. Uh, if you had a spreadsheet laid out Monday to Sunday, you looked at the figures that the bar pulled in every day, and you're like, what's happening on this Tuesday? Yeah. And it's like, oh, that's an open mic. Yes. They've got the numbers, man. They know what's exactly. happening. Exactly. And an open mic is a bringing in. Like, it's... It, uh, really, hats off to anyone who is still hosting open mics because they're so big supporters of the arts. Plus... A very dangerous We're on the back end of, of the COVID arts. when hospitality fucking suffers. You yeah. know what I mean? And has been suffering. Mm. Lots of comedians do say as well, though, hosting open mics is one of the things that makes you much, much stronger. Yeah. Because you're going up between all the craziness and you always have to react off the room and what's happened before and after. Dude, and I'm mm. hosting He's Crown. Hosting this I yeah. yeah. Sick. That's cool. I know. It should be good, man. I'll be there for sure. Hell yeah. And this, be is, fun. this is the idea of like, they'd always pa- uh, pay the host $200, which <laughs> they usually <laughs> let them know a week in advance. Yeah. So yeah, it's weird that you haven't heard anything. You heard it here first. Yeah. When's this come out? Is this coming out before then? Yeah. Wednesday, yeah. This comes out yeah, Wednesday. Nice. So yeah, if anyone listening... Crown on Thursday. Come yeah. to Crown Comedy. Um, uh, Louis Hotel. Yeah, Louis Paramount Hotel. Road, Lewisham. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. God damn. Yeah, come tomorrow. Oh. But um, I'm excited. Should be good. We, yeah. How, how are we going with time? We do have a few more things that we want to yeah. touch on. We do have a fun little segment that we like to do here. Oh, okay. Yeah. All we right. don't need to close off with it. 
Well, do you have Do you have anything else? Um, do I have anything else going on? I had a funny little idea of um, like you know Destiny's Child. Yeah. I was thinking of Destiny's Miles, <laughs> and it's... it was Miles Milson. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, Destiny's Miles. Um, <laughs> yeah. Lady. <clears throat> Ladies leave your... I can't do it. I'm trying to do miles. Ladies. Yeah. Ladies leave your... Ladies leave your man at home. The pockets that's a terrible one. Yeah, that's pocket. a <laughs> The pockets are full of ballers. Big ballers. Oh, that's better. And their up. pockets are full grown. Um, the club's... The club's jumping, jumping. I thought, And I thought regular jumping was pretty bad. So the, this must be oh, really yeah. going... This must really... <laughs> this must really be going off then. Oh yeah, um, uh, sick. That's yeah. sick. Uh, <laughs> where where Destiny's Miles um, come down? Um, uh, I'm trying to think of some Destiny's Child songs. Uh, I'm, I'm literally gonna look up Destiny's Child songs, but I did find that a funny little idea. World Destiny's. news. Yeah, we got um. Uh, I don't even know if Child really rhymes with. Miles. Here we go. <laughs> say my name. Say my name. <laughs> Everyone's around you. <laughs> Tell me, baby, that I love you. Yeah, he, he had a he had say a my um, name. Say my name. I'm a survivor. Well, it doesn't even matter. I'm no one knows on. Miles. <laughs> <laughs> he had you a know, song. I'm, Did you ever hear his song? I'm a it survivor. Was, it was Dog at the Dog Park. Really? Uh, a couple really? of dogs down at the dog park. Down dogs at down the dog, dog park, park. Down at the dog park. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah that's AJ pretty, showed me. It was pretty a funny. Pretty good one. Pretty the guy that made our intro music is actually called DJ Dog Park. DJ so Dog small, Park. Small world. It was called. He's, he's, it was called like Siggy Rats or something. Like his uh, band was. Oh, or whatever. nice. Yeah, I remember AJ showed me ages ago. All the ladies are independent. Throw your hands up at me. All the all the ballers who rock the dollars, throw your hands up at me. <laughs> at He's uh, so funny, man. I reckon he's so funny. Miles is amazing. Yeah. Absolutely. We all amazing. love him, right? We all let's say we all love Miles. Someone said all he was on us. Kill Tony. If you go back in the Kill Tony, Kill, you can find him, yeah. Miles was on Kill Tony if you go yeah. back. That's what I someone said he was on Kill Tony if you go back. Because I, I would love Sydney. to see where oh, Elliot Rivetti did it Kill Tony once here as well. Um, he's, Miles is so calm. I wonder how he'd be so in front calm. Of, in I, front I don't of, know. I've never seen it. I went on Kill Tony a while back. It, uh, was, it, was, news, it was pretty all right. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, that, 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 <laughs> I know. Yeah. The last one there, you fucking nailed Wait, it. I'm again. right on the line. Do it again, do it again. I went on Kill Tony a while ago. It was pretty all right. No, no, I'm, I'm kind of losing him. The, the one before was better. Yeah. I think if I have how another... do you do that? I think man? if I have another five minutes thinking about Miles and how he speaks, I could probably get there. Probably get that? there. <laughs> I wish I could that's do that. Be, mate, that's, that's a new little one, my Miles... Um, impression anyway everyone's favorite time of the podcast um you'll probably pick up on what we're doing here very quick okay world news welcome to world news welcome to world news with the sausage uh, boys we don't have any uh quick blurb about what this is we just we hope just everyone go it. we just kind of do it okay <laughs> <coughs> A really big win. Court ruling means Biloela Tamil family members can apply for bridging visas. Um, <laughs> what the fuck? A really, <laughs> <laughs> it's a really opposite of Jackson's penises win. Tennis legend labels Tennis Australia pathetic over confiscation of where is Peng Shui shirts. That chick, uh, yeah. Yeah, so Tennis Australia's gotten rid of all the shirts. People wearing them at the tennis. Sounds like China got rid I of them. I think, yeah. That's, there we go. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay. I, I thought think. she came back. She Did disappeared she, and then she came back. Yeah, she came back, but she's Maybe it was a, like a weekend at Bernie's thing where she was oh just like God. this. Yeah, Peng <laughs> Shui. Uh, she, she, came back and she, was, <laughs> she came back and she was two feet taller and it. Man in a wig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I play Shui. I play no, tennis. No. You know it was kind of fake too because Yao Ming was in the photo. You're like, all is good. All is good. <laughs> John Cena's just there with her. You're like, yeah, <laughs> you love being with Peng Shui. Yeah, yeah uh, uh, Peng Shui was just with me. That's why you couldn't see her. <laughs> okay, Australia's Hermit Kingdom seems to finally set fall to Omicron 
I don't even know what that means. That means like all those fucking feral people that live in Byron. Is that oh, what the hermits are? are? Oh, is that what they are? <laughs> I think that's... They, they call the hermit. Like the people that move around in vans and like... Oh, they call that the her- hermit kingdom. Dude, when we were, went up to no schoolies, so. we stopped in Byron for the night. Yeah. And um, my we, we just like slept in the car, pretty much in our seats, because we're like, there's nowhere we can kind of pull up and set up a tent, whatever. Did you get fined? Uh, no, I think we were fine. Anyway. But uh, yeah, so we're sitting there, right? My two friends have like passed out. I'm like struggling to sleep because I'm like, this is fucking weird. I, I was like on edge because it was my car too, right? Yeah. And I just like have my eyes closed and I open them and there's like a guy with his dick out. <laughs> well, how? And there was just a crazy local guy jacking his dick in the car park. And I'm like... Was it like right look- up close or at a distance? A couple meters away. Pretty close. Not looking at us. Not looking at yous. No, just they're doing it. Looking for like, like so he's jerking. Were you like he's jerking? Were you like silhouette so you could just see his dick out from the side of him and like his butt s- behind him? Nah, he was lit up, dude. Oh man, <laughs> I know, pretty full on. And right? then what did what homeless did, pubes look like? Why did you go over and know. say, "Do you need help with that"? I thought that was a pretty weird addition <laughs> to the story. Yeah, and uh, I want to know what's more messed up. It wasn't me that saw that. It was my uh, friend that was sleeping in the car because that was actually me. <laughs> <laughs> No, but it was skits. You know what? It's even more messed up than that. He wasn't jerking off. I was blowing him <laughs> with my butthole. <laughs> anyway, I realized just for a second. Wait, I wasn't you're not lo- Peng Shui. <laughs> <laughs> I realized I wasn't looking at world news. I was looking at Australian news. So that's why that was a bit confusing. Here we go. <clears throat> China sends the largest number of fighter jets into Taiwan's, Taiwan's air defense identification zone since October. <laughs> Uh, um, largest number of fighter jets. So they send a whole bunch of fighter jets into Taiwan. Um, so wait, the, we're generally just trying to tag these things. Is yeah, that pretty much. Yeah, okay. that's right, the idea. Right. Just of, making sure I know what's going on. You kind of picked up on that. Yeah. It's, it's not really. Uh, uh, give, us, give us a good one. Give us a good okay, one. let's get a good one. Uh, China's zero tolerance COVID strategy sees massive, massive testing blitz ahead of Beijing Winter Olympics. Uh, Does it snow in China? <laughs> I didn't even know it's snowed in China. <laughs> I guess it does. So big, yeah. it must. Yeah, so must. big. It must. They got the Winter Olympics, so they've got some sort of zero tolerance COVID strategy. Okay. Uh, so you're telling me the next Winter Olympics is in Wuhan? That's a good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's very. Be like, yeah, we uh, yeah, we had the virus, but we're having the Olympics here. And uh, sorry, everyone, but it's bat soup for dinner. <laughs> Uh, like, oh, they don't have to build uh, places to put uh, all the athletes because it's just dead bu- oh, dead. <laughs> there's just empty buildings everywhere <laughs> <laughs> that's true no. yeah everyone dies so you can go anywhere um, <laughs> the voices are back uh, the voices are back <laughs> <laughs> it's usually where the voices shine through okay, so yeah normally we just keep the voices contained for this section <laughs> and it's at the end of the episode this has been a whole voice episode <laughs> it's been a voice the episode I feel like I bring episode. the worst out of him it's been a voice the episode this Um, (laughs) school has already gone back in the u.s the way omicron is being handled there could offer lessons to australia we shouldn't be taking any lessons from the american schooling system (laughs) yes also because they uh shoot omicron (laughs) and black people people. (laughs) yeah and they get the autistic kid uh, if you have a if you cough you're getting but yeah, right. it, yeah. <laughs> okay, nine months pregnant and fearing for her life. U.S. Army wife Sarah made a risky phone call. A week later, she was dead. She told the dad was black. <laughs> oh, dad! I <laughs> fucked up the line. She told her. Uh, she good. told her yeah. army husband <laughs> that the dad was black. <laughs> yeah, I haven't been. Yeah, I haven't been seeing any anyone. That's every chick. Yeah. That title could be said about every chick who cheated on their fucking boyfriend <laughs> before they popped the little kid out. Who's Tyrone? Uh, he's just a friend, okay? If you're married... Tyrone comes over on the weekends to help with the kids, seeing as you're fighting these towel heads. There's certain <laughs> times, there's certain times, segregation is necessary. And if you are a woman and you're married and you're cheating... Yes. You got to stick to the kind that you picked in the first place. Nice, nice, <laughs> because you can end up dead. She yeah. killed. She, she died. Yeah, she died. How? Um, so what? She was fearing for her life. Uh, she's an. Interview, she just made a risky phone call. A week later, she was dead. 
maybe I, I can't. Well, understand. she actually is dead. Yeah, she died. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> Which makes it even more hilarious. <laughs> She'd be like, um, "Sorry, Tyrone, they don't have any more." KFC ran out of fried chicken. <laughs> <laughs> maybe the phone call was just a, was, was just a baby. It was just like, "I'm calling from inside the house." <laughs> Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, she rang. Um, she rang. Uh, she rang up the airport and bought a plane ticket to Japan. And unfortunately, it's Godzilla season. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's very good. That's very good. Episode title: It's Godzilla season. Godzilla season. By Godzilla Peter season. Light. Hell yeah. Okay. Pretty British MP claims she was fired from her ministerial post due to her Muslimness. Is Muslimness a word? <laughs> I know. That's, that's, that's very interesting. She's MP like, stands for more pussy. <laughs> no, it stands for Muslim pussy. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go, yeah. actually. Yeah. Go on, love. How about you give us some of that Muslim fanny? Bit of that cash, love. Yeah, <laughs> go on, love. I oh, know. How about, how about you? I floor my plane right into your twin towers. Come we, on, just be a jolly good sport now. What we, are we even talking about here? On. It's just a little... Just a little snog. Go on, love. The Take that silly towel got, off your head and let's got, see what you look like. She got fired for being Islamic. Yes. In She's England. saying um, she, yeah, she was fired from a ministerial... Is it minis- ministerial? Post due to her Muslimness. The, yeah, they got confused when they put her in there. Normally MP means massive penis. That's but good. in this ah. case, it meant Muslim <laughs> pussy. So <laughs> she just slipped through the cracks. I'm sorry, old chap. We thought we were looking for a massive penis. <laughs> um, um, disgusting. What for? Unless uh, you're never hiding mind. one of them. <laughs> never, mind. Um, never mind. Anyway, um, <clears throat> here we go. Nightclub fire claims 17 lives in Cameroon as country host football tournament. Well, they'd been to their tax agent just before that and they were claiming everything they could because they didn't turn much of a profit that year. (laughs) 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 And also, uh, Huey Phillips was opening an open mic and um, he was charging a one drink minimum for the African comics. He's like, what do you mean we have to pay? What do you mean a one drink minimum? There we go. One drink minimum, unless you're a person of colour or a woman. Ooh. That seems kind of racist. That might be. The it, is. <laughs> it is. It is. Wow, that's a very interesting one. That's how you diversify like, a room. Huey Phillips, more like Jewy Phillips. <laughs> I'm not going to pay one uh, anyway. Um, here we I go. am the Bushman. <laughs> <laughs> we have your favourite place, New Zealand, to impose tougher restrictions after Omicron community spread. I'm sorry, fellas. <laughs> You can't keep playing your ukuleles <laughs> outside. You're gonna go inside the house to do that. Oh, cheer, bro. Oh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, mates. What's a stereotype of, uh, of New Zealand? What do they like to do? Eat. Eat. Uh, <laughs> Move to Queensland. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, Samoa and uh, Kiribati go into lockdown after international arrivals bring COVID nineteen. Okay, so on to the same voice. Oh, <laughs> those fellas brought COVID-19. We're going to go into lockdown. So, fellas, remember, no more ukuleles outside. <laughs> if you want to beat your wives, you got to do it inside. Uh, they don't beat their wives. Their wives can beat them back. Yeah, really <laughs> beat them back. <laughs> um, Hong Kong defends hamster cull amid worsening COVID-19 outbreak. Uh... <laughs> No, I, we got to keep all these hamsters. I put in my butt, it feel real good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about the cover star. I got to keep putting hamsters in my butt. <laughs> it feel real good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Every parent's worst nightmare. Stories of families giving up children as Afghan food crisis deepens. Well, they're hungry. They're eating the jar. Yeah, it's like, sorry, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, buddy, you are lunch. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> sorry, my friend. Sorry, my friend, you are now lunch. Sorry, son, you're looking very... Uh, <laughs> 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 Ahmed, 
Bro, did you just put my son into Ziki? Why is that the Ziki all over my son? I can't figure out an Afghan accent. I'm kind of going all over the air, all over the place. Bro, why is it the Ziki all over my son? You're not going to eat him, are you? Because they said either either I eat my son or MP. <laughs> 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 bro, I'm not, no, I'm not gay though, bro. I'm not gonna eat my, I'll eat my own son before you call me gay. <laughs> Honestly. Okay, anyway, that's not, it doesn't even make sense. <clears throat> um, there are fears Europe is the closest, closest it has been to war in decades. Yes, this is very true. What's causing the uh, Russia-Ukraine crisis? I think we know it is Huey Phillips' one drink <laughs> minimum policy. It, uh, it bars for open bikers. <laughs> yeah, but Europe's about to get to a war. With who? Uh, this Russia-Ukraine crisis. Because I don't Wasn't know... there a war there throughout the whole 90s? <laughs> I think so. And the something's fucking, going like, in... Um, uh, in the Yugoslavian countries, they all, they were basically at war for the whole 90s, weren't they? Yeah, I think they're just constantly at war. Yeah, and all those Slavic countries. In, something's going on in Kazakhstan right now. My because sister. I know... <laughs> <laughs> There is something going on. <laughs> Number four sh- prostitute no in all of Kazakhstan. <laughs> uh, Very nice. Because I know I, I download all my music illegally and my favourite go-to um, uh, site is closed down. It's based in Kazakhstan. Oh. And they're like, yeah, we'll be back as soon as we get internet again. We're what? Going through, yeah. We're going through like a major crisis. How'd like, they tell you that? Oh, on the site. How'd they do that? They didn't have internet. I know, I was going to say. <laughs> don't, know, and don't, don't ask any question how we are writing this it without like the internet. Conspiracy. Uh, I give you other song, just buy one drink. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, no, I can get the songs for free over here. <laughs> no, I can go to Crown Comedy and I can get it for free. I'm entitled to it. I know it's not bringing the bar any money, but... <laughs> Very nice. Money, but uh, what maybe. else we got? What else we got here? Uh, what is a good one? Oh, here we go. Uh, this time the ocean was stronger. 75-year-old <laughs> French solo Atlantic rower found dead. Such a weird way to start that <laughs> article. <laughs> Really, it's honestly, a, like A B C. This time the ocean was stronger. It sounds like a child story. <laughs> this time the ocean was stronger. <laughs> I had the, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Ooh. Uh, okay. <coughs> it's Ooh. a French accent. <coughs> the ocean is very strong today. Oh, no. I've, I've lost it. The ocean is very very strong today. The ocean is very strong today, and I've lost it. Yeah, you know, the key one they do, they go comfortable, 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 comfortable. comfortable. <laughs> idiots. <laughs> Learn another language, how <laughs> dumb. Okay, also this, yeah. So a seventy-five-year-old French solo Atlantic rower was found dead because he actually um, committed suicide after he found out there was a one drink minimum policy at Huey <laughs> Phillips' new room. And he's like, I can't, I've lost my, I've lost my ability to do voices. As hopefully the listeners know, I could do a pretty good French accent earlier in the episode. Um, here we go. Death toll from airstrike on Yemen, Yemen prison rises to eighty-two dollars. That's the toll you have to pay if you want to do an airstrike. <laughs> <in Yemen>. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't have an e tag on your plane. Then you have to pay even more. That's that's very good. Ten dollars. Yeah, very good service and handling fees. So. Um, <clears throat> it's uh, here we go. It's not just celebrities and tennis stars who dis- disappear in China. Here are um, others who went missing. So is Feng, Feng Shui just gone? <laughs> well, I don't know because I mean, disappeared. I googled it like, like a, just a week or two ago. Who cares, bro? <laughs> <laughs> We've been doing this this world news thing for like. I don't know how long. <laughs> yeah. And Peng Shui's come up every <laughs> week. Come up every single week. Go she just appeared. It was weird as fuck. It was a yeah. weird ass story. But then she popped back up in a photo with Yao Ming. Oh. And then now they're saying she's gone again. So I don't know what's going on. Goodness gracious. I wish someone could make Huey Phillips disappear so I could do rooms without having to pay a fortune. <laughs> this is you straight edge guys. You're just hardcore. <laughs> no, <we> just, <laughs> so I literally come in with like Gunther Y. Gomez, do you know what I mean? <laughs> like a Mexican cola, um, like 
two meals and just eat it there. In, right in front of the right bar stuff. in front of the bar stuff. Yeah. They literally... Yeah. There's a vendetta. There's Grim a, has a vendetta yeah. with the guy that works. One of the guys there hates me. Really? Hates me. His name's like Harry or something. He's name, nice. He's like, oh, fella, you got to stop eating all that food. <laughs> no, he doesn't even, doesn't even do that. He's a lot more mean about it. He just is so nasty. Do you get food there? I bring the outside food. Do you actually? You're not joking. I was. Do you know what it sounds? It's, it's horrible. It's horrible. And I've always thought for like so long, like, why does this guy hate me? And it's because I bring outside food. 100% it yeah, is. What are you talking about? <laughs> There's not even a doubt in my mind. Like, yeah, one time I brought like, uh, I got a burrito from Gazmo y Gomez. I got some nacho, like the, the nacho. Oh, actually, no, the um, queso fries. Just in an experiment. Tomorrow... Yeah. No, you don't drink. Yeah. Go get 12 beers tomorrow and sit in a cafe and see how many of them you can drink before they <laughs> kick you out. <laughs> uh, we're good. Uh, oh, we're good. No, all right, a couple more. A couple yeah, more couple and then we're going to wrap. Yeah, We've gone yeah. over. All 100 lab monkeys accounted for after several um, escape crash in the US. Um, I think there are a few million, especially around New York in that Atlanta area. I saw a few monkeys on my television today. <laughs> I heard a few monkeys. I saw a few monkeys uh, in that movie I was watching. I watched that Black Panther. A few monkeys on that movie. I think there's a lot more there to be accounted for. A lot more monkeys that are loose in America. Have you been to Detroit? Have you well, been to? Is there any more stories? <laughs> <laughs> okay, former Malaysian PM. Uh, Mahathir Mohammed admitted to hospital for third time in a month. He's a uh, he's the, a pussy Muslim. <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna make the exact same That's joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was just gonna make the exact same joke. He's like my friend once, twice, but three times is uh. Here we go. Drinking water the priority in Tonga after volcano, um, tsunami with Australian naval ship on the way. Who'd have thought that it took this long for Tongan people to figure out they had to drink water? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean we got to drink water? What well, was it a volcano? Uh, yeah, did you know about the huge uh, volcano in Tonga? No. Yeah. Are you joking? Are you, you kidding? There was a tsunami morning. It last was literally week. everywhere. Really? I yes. thought I was going to die. I was in Queensland right next to the beach and being like, am I going to die today? That's oh, sad. It was a 0.9 meter swell. Also, it was like yeah. Jackson's penis. <laughs> but nine meter. meter. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> millimeter. Yeah. Uh, oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> that works. Um, Zen Buddhist master who rubbed shoulders with Martin Luther King and Oprah dies at 95. Rubbed <laughs> shoulders? Yeah. Why are we putting slang in death notices? I know. Also, he was <laughs> a masseuse. <laughs> <laughs> he was also, there we go. He was also a celebrity masseuse. <laughs> but yeah, I work with everyone. I work with Martin Luther King, uh, opera. I work with lion monkeys. <laughs> no. Oh, dude. No. Dude. What? I'm a monkey masseuse. Oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's like watching the sun setting. And it's just gone and it's pitch black. <laughs> it is true. This room was light when we started. I know it was. Yeah. It's getting darker and darker. Um, Brian Laundry confessed what, to oh. killing Gabby Petito in a notebook entry, FBI what? says. Why the fuck would he write it down? What a I dumb know, cunt. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to kill her today. What an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, I'm, I'm Criminals are so stupid. Oh, well, I mean, I got a journal. It's good for my mental health. <laughs> yeah, he's journaling. You know what I mean? yeah. And he's like, it's so funny if like Brian Laundry's just like was actually going to become a comic afterwards. And he's like, let's just say I took out the laundry today. <laughs> well, they, even afterwards, they'd be like, why'd you write all this stuff down? He's like, Rogan told me to journal. <laughs> uh, let's see what we've got. Um, I don't even know what that means. So Regis. it's official now. He killed her. Yeah, he killed her. Meter. Killed himself. Um, why Meatloaf fans loved him uh, beyond Bat Out of Hell. Did you hear that he died of <laughs> COVID? The ultimate yeah. Bat Out of Hell? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that was that oh, yeah, did you do that joke? Yeah, I did. Oh, that. That was someone your joke. someone yeah. else posted that, bro. Oh, well, yeah, did you know yeah. it was posted? I thought, did you post it, though? Oh, no, I posted it. I oh, posted it in that. I didn't do it on stage. Do you have yeah. a different name on Facebook or something? No. I swear I saw someone else post it. I thought I saw someone else post it as well. 
Uh, I, know someone I think I deleted on. it. I think I deleted it when I was maggot because uh, I did post it. I swear. Oh, I don't even know what page is on. Anyway. Anyway. USA, US and Russia agree to keep talking after meeting on Ukraine. It's so funny that there's probably just going to be like a world war and this is just how it happens kind of behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Wow, Daniel Pundit. Oh no, he's got my name in the corner oh, over there. Look I in the bottom gave corner. You credit. Of it. I know, but he, why would? That's so weird. That's I don't know why he gave you credit. It. That's kind of so cool. fucking weird. In all honesty, is it? That's right, isn't it? I only half saw that. Is that my name in the bottom corner of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is. That's why it? I was so confused, dude. Because yeah. I saw it and I saw your name down there, and I'm like, what? I do remember seeing him actually. Yeah, Daniel Punton posted that on the Facebook. Group. Anyway, fellas. Anyway, folks. Let's wrap it. Um, We're gonna make it huge now. Uh, oh, here's a quick one. It's all black Thursday. It's all black Thursday. 17 killed after explosion caused by truck and motorcycle crash in Ghana. How did 17 people die when a motorbike and a truck crashed together? Is there 17 people on a motorbike? Oh, yeah, it's Ghana. <laughs> 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 they didn't count how many chickens also died in their crash. Also, how many chickens died in Ghana at their KFC? Yeah, well, I guess that's really the whole business, that, eating, chickens. Yeah, eating chickens. Oh, well. We have to have something funny, so we're not finishing until, yeah. we get a, until we get a hit, which is sad because, again, we have been here in the past until 11 o'clock. The deepest... Have you heard the expression, the deepest blues are black? I don't get it. That's the whole thing. If we had not a joke on that, that would be very funny. I thought it was a race thing. I was trying to like put it all together. Yeah, I was I, trying to say it earlier. Have you heard that expression? The, the deepest, deepest blues, blues are, black. are black. No? No, I don't get it. I don't really get it either, but I was trying to make that work and then I was going to say the deepest blues are hack. But I'm really, <laughs> I'm really just trying to show how the sausage is made here. Oh, you know? oh shit. It doesn't really yeah, mean that, anything. Um, here we go. Come on. I'm gutted. Adele delays Las Vegas show due to Sydney comedian double booking. <laughs> So apparently, <laughs> apparently Adele had to delay her Las Vegas show because because, of it's, because it clashed because there was a Sydney comedian um, performing there. Was it you at the same time? No, I don't. I, I, uh, Steph Broadbridge. Was this your grand plan to end it on a laugh? <laughs> Come on, man! Fire off another. Game. I know. Yeah, let's get going. Woo! Okay, touch and go. Touch and go for rare twin elephants born in Kenya. What are they talking about? Just <laughs> Kenyans with huge penises. Yeah. Dang, I guess just my the uncle. Babies. I, just, <laughs> just I guess my Kenyan. I guess my uncle is raising elephants now. Because they're touching. Me. Uh, uh, Russia <laughs> promises ban on. <laughs> <laughs> so bad to bomb on a podcast. I know. <laughs> You get numb to there it. Go. Uh, <laughs> rare, pristine coral reef found at unusual depth off Tahiti coast. Um, <laughs> Peru says. Let's wrap it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yeah, I know what you mean. Remember when we were talking about Godzilla? That was pretty good. That was pretty good, wasn't <laughs> it? Yeah. Imagine. Um, let's. Let, we got to tie everything together. And this is again. This is Sausage Boys podcast. We'll show them how the sausage is made. Godzilla. Huey Phillips. Um, who else have we talked about? Peng Triple Shui. J, what? Yeah, Peng Shui, Triple J's 100. What if the Triple J's 100 next year is just like, Peng Shui, she's all <laughs> fine. She alive. Yeah, yeah. Peng Shui, she all grew. Start asking questions. Peng Shui, she's all good. <laughs> okay. That's true. Jackson thought it was over, but, um... There's still more to come. It was over for a second. It was over for a second. Yeah, he's had his hands in his head. So it was our worst episode ever. <laughs> I think the the best way to put it is he's over it. I'm not sure if this is over, but he's definitely over it. We can keep going. Yeah. But I'm yeah. telling you, there's nothing. No, it's, it's all right. Not get better no, it's you. getting worse and worse. Yeah, see, I, think I, like, I like it when it's like this. What else have we got? We got Huey, Huey Phillips saying, oh, yeah. One, oh no, I've lost. I've lost all my ability. Yeah, I oh know. We need to get Huey about, to do some Peng Shui material. What about Huey, Jack, and Jill lips? And it's 
Adam Sandler's worst movie, but if you want to watch it, you have to buy a drink. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's very funny. Um, what about Huey Pollops? And he's got to go through a that's a, very a, a, a very um, what's it called? In insertive. No, nah, I don't even. Know. What about Miles Wilson? Miles Wilson parking. It's like, yeah, come in, but you got to pay thirty five dollars, Dan, <laughs> to park here for the night. You got to pay thirty five dollars. But you can use the Thanks car. Thanks so much for you coming. Use, man. <laughs> Thanks for having us, you boys. Car, you can use a car park all night if you wanna. You can use it all night if you wanna. You can use a car park all night if you wanna. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you wanna, you can leave your friends behind. Huey Phillips is charging a dollar to perform, but he ain't no friend of mine. <laughs> I heard uh, KD's going to take over the Monday room. I am going to take over the Monday room. And yeah. I'm going to say we're actually all shouting each comedian <laughs> a drink. You actually have to eat a steak before you, you go on stage. To yeah, you Just to, to make sure there's meal. no fucking <laughs> vegans in there. <laughs> <laughs> you have to show me your penis in order to perform. Sorry to the female comedians. Figure something out that we're only having comedians with penises. Really stretch that clit out or yes. something. Figure it out. <laughs> Again, I've got a small penis. It looks like a vagina. You so <laughs> figure something out. <laughs> All right. Anyway, Miles, Miles Milson has a few more things to say on the podcast. Just let it die. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to let it die this, this quick. I've got a few more things to say. I've got a few more things to say. All right, sign us off. Anyway... Be Miles Milson. We've got a we've <coughs> we've had a guest on the podcast. Do you have anything to say? Uh, <laughs> it's been fun to watch this just devolve <laughs> into insanity <laughs> and just Peng, get like more and more racist the whole Peng, time. <laughs> Peng Shui is fine. <laughs> if I was if Peng Shui is all good, he probably says from that place China or something. <laughs> they probably sound like this or oh, Ching Chong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, goodbye, everybody. <laughs> See ya. Thanks for having us. <laughs>